going on everybody welcome back to another exciting episode of the vile files reality recap edition i am your host nick joined by the household we got uh ally is with us in st paul minnesota sweet 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 boy justin and sierra is with us right now it's going to be a long day. It's a bachelor finale day. By the way, congratulations to Joey and Kelsey, the happy couple. They are together. They definitely have a love that's fun to watch. Like they're an adorable couple. I like attractive couples, so yay. Yeah, they're like they're definitely a hot, hot couples, couple for sure. Yeah. They're very lovely. And we will have the pleasure of uh, speaking with the happy couple on this week's going deeper. We'll be so, so excited about that. That'll be super exciting for us. Also, our hearts go out to uh, Daisy the runner-up, fellow runner-up, part of the club. Welcome, Daisy, to the uh, runner-up club, of which <laughs> do, I am a two-timer. Do we clap for that? Yeah, sure. Let's clap for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, congratulations to Jen, the first Asian bachelorette. Very, very Woo! big congratulations. Definitely, like, a lot of discourse around the choice. Um, but, we, yeah, we'll be breaking down all things uh, Bachelor finale at the end of this episode because... Uh, We'll be watching it later. Anyways, we have a very special guest today. Super excited to welcome then the host of the hit podcast, Disrespectfully. Yay. Uh, Katie Maloney and Dana Carthen is... Carthen? Carthen? <laughs> what? Kathen. Why do you Kathen. always do this? Kathen. 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 You, were so, you were so close. You did this last time. But... I know. I Well, I do that because I get it in my head. It's Dana, a self-fulfilling Dana, prophecy Dana now. Kathen. Hi. How are you, ladies? <laughs> Excellent. How are you? Can, do, can I say it clean? Or do you want me to... Do you want it to be wrong on the show? No, and you want to give me shit? No, it's keep, up to keep, you. I think keep that. Keep it in. Okay. Yeah, I think because it's just going to happen every time. Eventually, Dana Kathan. Danny Carthen. Kava. Danny, just so you know Danny now. Danny Kathy. He looks at me sometimes and goes, hi, Sheena. Oh, sorry. I called her and Sheena I go, twice last week. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. Yeah. Woo. It was a... Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, this is a Nick problem, yeah. so it's fine. I'm fine. With I it. have so much going on in my head right now. It's mm -hmm. it's broken. Okay. Anyways, ladies, how, uh, ladies, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm... A bit tongue. Tongue. Hungover. Hung. Hung, hung, yeah. hung. Do you want to say how many margaritas you had? Oh. I think it's noteworthy. I think it was about six. Ish. Over some time. But they come, they they bring it to you like in a little carafe. So it's like you, pour, that's like one and a half at a time. Mm, that's how I prefer my margaritas. One and so a half. So did you count, <sighs> did you have six of those? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's a trooper. So I said. What did, what, like, what did you do? Um, I, I was at Casa Vega for oh, like, oh, Casa Vega. like a solid seven hours with chilling with one of my friends. Oh, wonderful. Just it, was, like... it was like a new friend. So we had to like learn all. all oh, you had a friend the... date. Yeah. Love. Cute. Was this a yeah. platonic friend date? Like, well, yeah. I don't know. It's a <laughs> yeah. late, but just you're out, you're out there dating. I don't know. No, this is like a, like a, a new, like girlfriend <gasps> love i love a friend date yeah i made a new friend How did for we us meet? <laughs> i know i'm like i'm feeling a little threatened right now but that's fine we bonded over talking about margaritas so then we went and had to like drink margaritas i love that yeah and do we think there's gonna be like a second date for sure i love promising <laughs> Love no, it. we Definitely. need to celebrate. We need to celebrate <laughs> making friends in the, our society today at, at all ages because no one has friends. We're all buried into our phones. <laughs> yeah, and I think people like feel awkward about making new friends like in your like 30s or something because it's, I don't know, you make friends at school, you make friends sometimes in the workplace, but like making like friends, like meeting somebody one time like out at a party and you're like, let's hang out sometime and you feel like awkward about no, it, I but know. like, I don't know. And everyone's like, yeah, sometime. Yeah, <laughs> we should like, do that sometime. Sometime that yeah. never comes. No, you need no. to like hard. How did you? Were you? Who was the one? Like, but when? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we became friends that we follow each other on like on Instagram, and then we just like started talking. We're like, okay, well, like, when are you free coming up? And then it was just like, let's go sometime next week. And then I was like, when are you free? Why wasn't Dana invited? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I by the way, I texted her and I was like, hey, do you want to go to lunch? She's like, no, I'm going to lunch with my friend. And I was, or she's like, I'm on my way or whatever. And she wouldn't respond to any of my texts. Because like, when, okay. when I, I don't know this person, it's like, you don't want to like bring two That's people true. who are like, yeah. know each other really well. And then there's like one person who like doesn't, you know what I mean? Then, yeah, it's, no, then it's an interview. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it's just like, hey. Um, well, yeah, you have to make and sure. how do you that, feel about? You have to yeah. make sure. Yeah. You have to make sure that it makes good. So we're going to a situation. What would you do? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, or like, the, yeah, I don't know. We've well, we've talked about that on disrespectfully that making friends in your thirties and I'm forties, fifties on is difficult. But you and I both value friendships a lot. Yes, 
Yeah. I, I, honestly, I don't even think it's dico- difficult for adults. These d- dickiful. Difficult. <laughs> yeah, the dicks on my brain. What did you do this weekend? Went out. Got tattoos. I did. We had a late night. Tattoos, plural. Tattoos. Got two new tattoos. Love them. And we ended up having a late night. Like, I got back at like three in the morning on mm. Sunday. But we did almost go to an after party, but decided to pivot and do Taco Bell instead. So we ate mm. Taco that Bell is an like after animals. Party. That is. You're right. It is an after party in and of itself. And yeah. then yesterday I did a little bit of bed rot and then went to Olive Garden, which is still trying to get them to sponsor us. Solid. How many times bed do I have rot. to shout your name, Olive Garden? <laughs> I used to work there. Did you? Yeah. Was it a pain in the ass to make the soup salad and breadsticks? I heard servers get annoyed because you have to they have to do it themselves in the back. What do you mean do it themselves? Like get it all prepared and sent like as opposed sure. to like yeah. it, it's you have to like scoop it. You don't exactly have to make it. Well, yeah, I don't the only think that back annoyed me about it cuz like the all you can eat soup salad and breadsticks, you know like you're not going to make any money. <laughs> so cheap, yeah. yeah I always like tip very well on The cheapos come in for the unlimited soup salad and bread fix. You're like, "All right, well, you guys can go fuck yourself." Listen, it's so good though. Yeah, but if you're gonna get unlimited soup salad and breadsticks for six ninety nine, I don't know what it costs these days. Um, you know, take care of your on take care of your wait staff. Depends well, on if it's lunch or dinner. If I think it's, it's nine ninety nine. Well, if it's you, lunch. you're ordering seven margaritas. <laughs> exactly. Also, that yeah. correct. <laughs> That's what I'm not worried about. about you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <You're> yeah. lush. <laughs> no, just but also you're you're a former server. You understand. Yes, you don't I... understand when it's the plight of the industry people. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. What did you do? I went out on Friday night with a friend to an event. Mm. I had some drinks. And then Saturday was when I stayed in bed all day. And then Sunday is reset, get ready for the week. And here I am. What did you do? (laughs) What did you do? I also had a friend date on Friday. So Mm. Katie and I are aligned. And was this a new friend? It was just like a... It is a new friend. It was our second friend date. How'd it go? I thought it went very well. She's a big Bravo oh. reality TV fan, so okay. it's very fun. How'd you guys love. meet? I slid into her DMs. <gasps> love. Ooh, I love wow. the vulnerability, Justin. Making the first move. Yeah. Um, I hang with my little kitty, and I made sushi. Like then a cat? Uh, you know, okay. That kind know. of kitty. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's specify. <laughs> what? Who knows? It's Versus 2024. What? That could mean anything. Oh, my yeah. God. But okay. I, just, I just got her, so she's like a little baby. Oh. She you wakes me up what, in the night. I'm going to need to see Ruby. photos. I'll show you photos. Wait, sorry. What was the name? Ruby. Fantastic name, first of all. Mm-hmm. Second of all, I'm going to need to see photos as soon as possible. I'll show you. So and she's wait. five years old, so she's like a little woman. Oh, my God. But I love she's it. She's like an adult. You yeah. adopted. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Now that I hopped up for the first time in like eight months, it's good. Nice. Great. Fun. Brought, we brought River's Cradle outside. How was that for her? A little awkward. A little awkward. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for us, really. She was fine. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. It was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it was her first weekend alone because her mom has been with us. Did know, she go? Oh, wow. Did she go back? She went back. She'll be back here in a few weeks, but she went back um, to you know take care of her garden. How has it been <laughs> without the help? Honestly, great. Like her mom has been so much help, but now you guys got are, this. We got this. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's been great. Yeah. Honestly, really no complaints. It's uh, it's it's been nice to have her mom there to like every once in a while like hold the babes. And honestly, we 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 do have a babysitter, which has been helpful, which is a family friend, which mm-hmm. I can appreciate. You know, Sheena's plight. That's maybe the only thing about Sheena re- recently that I've been like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Before we get into all things reality recap, I I I was over the weekend. I'm going to go on a little bit of a soapbox. I know this is just like fun games, reality recap, and we keep it very light and fun because this is the show where we get to like your favorite reality TV shows. You just get to mentally check out at work and listen to us. But new dad over here found out that like, did you hear that Pornhub is no longer accessible in the state of Texas? No, what? but that's not surprising. Why? I mean, tex- it's Texas. Everything But do you know is... why? No. Why? And again, for all of... Texas's faults. I'm not here to, you know, I'm not aligned with everything in Texas, but it's my understanding. Could it get, you know, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't research this thoroughly, but it's my understanding that the Pornhub is no longer available in the state of Texas because they finally said, wait, you have to make sure minors aren't on this site. Meaning participating in videos no, or watching, watching it. Just watching it. Be able to okay. be like, you know, Right now, any kid, anyone, anyone can go on Pornhub or any of these porn sites. Your 13-year-old child, your 16-year-old child, your 12-year-old child can just, nothing's stopping them. There's no actual verification. They might ask you if you're 18, but all you have to do is say yes. (laughs) And Pornhub and the state of Texas was like, no, you have to make sure our kids aren't able to watch your smut. And Pornhub was like, eh, we'll just leave. Uh And I am here to say, that's so fucked up. And again, for all of Texas's faults or whatever, you know, 
and I, and I'm sure someone's gonna like write us in and be like, oh well, that part of legislation that are here here's and then I read some of the article like the lawyer for like I think Pornhub was basically like, well, you're gonna hurt the content creators and their ability to earn money. You're not actually gonna help the kids. I, listen, I don't fucking know. I'm not a I'm not a senator or a congressperson. And I don't know exactly how you do this or how you enforce this law. But I'm just here to say, as a society, I definitely think we need to wake the fuck up. I think it's alarming that like none of us know or realize that like our kids can go on fucking Pornhub and, and watch this stuff and like shame on the other 49 states for not being like, holy shit. No, we should not have minors being able to watch this shit. And I think we got to start like paying attention to the fact that like well, our phones are like weapons and like there's 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 there, like when it, even like the TikTok ban, like I don't want TikTok to go away. Like we run our business on TikTok. <laughs> But like, there's no, there's no personal verification for social media. Like they're like, I don't know what the number is. It's like, I don't know, 30 or 40% of the internet is our bots. They're, they're, it's fake, mm -hmm. which means that anyone with time or money can influence discourse. Like they mm -hmm. can troll people. So that means that a, a rich person, a, a, a corporation, a country, and like this shit happens. Like mm -hmm. we are. We are asleep at the wheel. And I think for all of the divisiveness in our country, I think we can all agree that social media has like ruined our mental health. And I'm not saying we should get rid of it, but we have to start like waking up and saying, hey, how as a society do we like put some kind of oversight? Like, how do we like make sure our kids aren't like able to like get these fucking like weapons like of information and like 12 year olds are just like on it doing and getting fucking brain why are there 12 year old influencers telling girls to go to sephora and get fucking makeup that's fucking crazy and like we're just all like no big deal like i don't know there's just no oversight and i think it's just fucking up our society and like i want to be on social media but like it's fucking crazy i don't know sorry it's just, I, I think, think that parents are deeply concerned i think this is a, this is yeah, a thing yeah. that but big we're people... all kind of asleep at the wheel cool. but like you know i think they're all concerned that's what i'm saying i actually think this is one thing as a society we can agree on we can yeah. agree on that we need to do something we need to wake up and we need to make sure that it's not just like when a minor goes online and log logs in and creates a a, a snap a tiktok or a snapchat or a instagram and they say are you 14 or i don't even know what the age requirement is i think it's like 13 or 14 but there's no verification there. Like, why? 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 Why is that? Why is that the case? Is there not parental controls on the internet that like block certain sites? Sure, like that? I'm pretty I think sure phones, there is. So like, phones if, have that. Okay, but also like, a uh, twelve-year-old doesn't need an iPhone. I agree. That's I, what's like. Mean, I don't know. I'm just of, confused. There's so a lot of your, absent parents if, out there. Okay, well then they're not concerned about what their kid is doing, and so they sh that if their kid's watching porn, then they're not concerned to begin with. I'm not trying to side with. It. I'm just. I'm just trying to look at both angles. You're no, either no, concerned no. or you're not concerned. If you're going to give your kid a phone and but you're not going to put certain like locks or controls on it then think, what happens after I, that is but the problem is though is this like when they've they've done like studies and they go around and ask kids I mean like well like i think there are i think there are things going on like i think this kind of has to start at like the community level like as a community like schools need to start saying like no no cell phones at the schools and i guess they went around and asking like teenagers like what would you do if like you couldn't have like a phone at school or you couldn't have instagram and the first question was well do my friends have it and they're like, no, no one would have it. Then like, then I would be okay with it. Mm -hmm. But it's more about like the, like the FOMO of it all. Like, oh, if everyone else is having it. So again, as parents, as a father who has like a newborn child, like eventually it doesn't matter how crazy or strict Nellie and I are on. If they go to school and everyone else has a phone on it, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so, it's so hard. And so yes, parents need to step up and do more. But like, I don't think as a, as a, as a country or as a society, we should just start at we need to start acting like these social media platforms and these phones have immense power mm -hmm. and there is no oversight at all and i'm i'm not someone who's like big on like more oversight and more government control i'm not like that kind of guy i'm just like we need like i guess my question is just like if for here's an example if budweiser somehow could through phones or through social media give your kids unlimited beer like all I had to do is log in and through social media they could tap in and drink as much beer as they want we would lose our fucking mind but what's the difference between that and porn because right now they can get unlimited fucking porn as long as they have a phone <laughs> so okay here here's the thing i understand what you're it's the same thing i understand what you're saying in terms of the phones the more accessibility but like when I was 16, there was definitely, I mean, you're at your computer or whatever, but it, there was still access to like kids are, and also 
kids do find a way. Sure. Like, like I, when it's, I was it's a kid, part of the problem. I had some parents who like they had, their dads had the a Playboy collection, and yeah, yeah, we would go sneak. But now the access to porn and yeah. the crazy fucking porn out there, and now our young boys, yeah. my daughter is going to be hanging out with a bunch of young boys who grew up on fucking porn from the age of fucking 11 and they're watching all this fucking crazy incest bullshit that's out there now it's fucking crazy I'm, we're programming our kids to be fucking sexual <laughs> deviants I'm hanging out with dudes my own age that watch <laughs> porn and they're fucking out of their minds so like and, like, they, and they were 12 when they first started well, like, I know but okay, I, I think the, I think the onus has to be on parents to all talk, us, talk yeah. to their kids yeah. but once you, once you like tar- start taking it to the government level of police and those things it can be a slippery slope uh, when we start I to, hear you. When we start That's to, why I said, So I think there needs yeah. to be, it, it has to but do start we, at uh, home. Do we allow our kids to drink beer? No, but like, come but on. I'm just saying, if we can do that, we can, you know what I'm saying? We just, there's a middle ground. I, I hear what you say. I'm not trying to like, <laughs> but I'm, I, I don't want go... the government to tell me when I can use my phone. I am just saying like right now, like the difference between, there's no difference between Pornhub giving all our kids access to their product and Budweiser, if there was a way through their phone to have kids have unlimited alcohol, it's the same thing. This is fucking the first thing. time I've ever thought about kids logging onto Pornhub. I know. In my that's life. what's crazy. Yeah. We're asleep at the wheel. We, I, well, we, that's what I'm saying. We're not thinking about it. We're just out of sight, out of mind, and we're all kids, walking around well, like zombies. When I'm hanging out with like, like my niece or something, do you know what she's doing? She's not logging. She's not getting out her iPad and going to fucking Pornhub. She's going on YouTube and watching like. Barbie you videos. You don't do it in front of adults. Yeah. Like me well, in middle school. No, I know, like, I know, but I like she's. Through? I literally like. I was like, I'll figure out a way to get around parental controls because I'm bored. Right. No, I know, but I'm just saying. Like, I don't. I think they're in. Not every kid is gonna be interested in that. No, well, I know, but I'm saying as a society <laughs> in general, all I'm saying is we need to acknowledge that a. True. We are. This technology has has evolved too fast. And right. we're not keeping mm-hmm. up with like how fast it's evolved. And as a society, we have to stop and say, wait, how is this affecting all of us? You know? Well, my question too is that it's not, or it is that it's accessible. But the fact of the matter is that it's not just like Pornhub or porn specific websites that you can get this or get access to porn. I'm like, it's on Twitter. It's yeah, on Reddit. Sure. It's yeah. on. So yeah. it's like, how do you regulate? Why are kids on, like, again, why are 12 year olds on TikTok or Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram? That's fucking crazy. Well, even um like Roblox, this is like I have a four year old niece and a nine month old, and I'm so scared for them as things advance. People were finding a way, and mi- mind you, they're predators to reach kids on Roblox. Mm-hmm. No, so there no. was like a 13 year old girl recently that ended up trying to go meet up with a man that had yeah. been manipulating her. They were saying yeah. like there's there, like the the pedophiles, the the sexual deviants, like the 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 fucking uh, the flashers. <laughs> they're not on the, the they're functions. not roaming the streets anymore. They're no, all fucking exactly. online. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we're taking our kids off the streets mm-hmm. and in off the playgrounds and we're just like protecting them and we're like giving them phones to shut them the fuck up. And like we're mm-hmm. like, it's fucking crazy. Well, what's your opinion on parents having profiles for their children? Because that's, right, because that's a big thing, too, mm-hmm. is that it's saying that you're giving access to a bunch of pedophiles who are liking photos of your kids holding a hot dog or. Yeah, you know? No, I know. And like the more like yeah. we have, you know, now I talk about this, like that's what I'm saying. It, it can't all fall on parents as individuals. Like it's just like as a country, we have no problem saying, hey, listen, like alcohol company, you can't sell to our minors. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm Do minors get away it. with it? Do they find a way? Sure. But like. As a whole, like school systems need to like we need to get our kids off the phone, walk into a high school these days. And, you know, you talk to parents and it's just like when we were in high school, those five minutes in between classes was like fun and socialize. And like we made memories and we were talking to our friends and passing notes. Now it's just like fucking zombie land and kids are on their fucking phones, walking to and from classes, being brainwashed by God knows fucking what a bunch mm-hmm. of fucking bots from who who knows what. You know, it's fucking crazy. And we just need to say time out wait how is this affecting us yeah. and like as uh, as parents what can we do to keep like us and our more more importantly our kids fucking safe and all i'm saying is this like as a com- like for, forget about we're just arguing about all the wrong things these days <laughs> I, you know, and like w- as parents, we're, we're regardless of what you believe in or what your priority is or what your God is or what your your ideologies are, we can all get on board to this. And I just think we're like, I think we need to wake up because I think honestly, our society is like poisoned and like, I think it's only get worse, not better. Mm-hmm. And speaking of, this brings us in the whole Kate Middleton of it all. <laughs> uh, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just going to say so, it. Wait, Cold. Sorry, not sorry about what? Well, we like, all like, 
Which... I, of course the world feels bad about uh -huh. Kate Middleton's alleged diagnosis. Yeah, and course. I hate saying alleged, but this is a boy who quiet wolf situation. And they've done, the royal family has done nothing but put out these crazy fucking lies. A week ago, they wanted us to believe that Kate Middleton was like doing graphic fucking design classes and photoshopping <laughs> photos and tweeting about this. And we're supposed to take this at face value. And it's horrific. I mean, it's, I'm, if she... Mm -hmm. It's horrific if, if she has to deal with this and our heart goes out to her if she's suffering from this, but they've done nothing. The royal family has done nothing but lie to the public. They have one job. They're a public facing family. Yeah. Their lives are paid by taxpayers. That their one job is to be transparent. That's it. Mm -hmm. And they can't do that. And we're supposed to like what? Like feel bad. And now you have every celebrity going out being like, oh, fucking shit. That meme I put out there only fucking shit. Of course we were having fun with it. They were putting out ridiculous lies. Well, the thing is, I, I'm sorry, if that's their one job, they should be fired because they so are, I don't think, I don't think the royal, I don't think the royal fan, well, in terms of like abolishing the monarchy, like, I don't think they are known for their transparency. I don't think that's ever been a thing. Has it? Like, sure. I know. They've only been criticized, mm -hmm. but it is in fact their one job. And well, back to like when I bring up technology, like now everyone like, listen, I don't know if that video was real or fake, but again, we need to wake up because there, today the technology exists for that to be a deep fake. There's a bunch of videos all over the internet of Megan, it's it's Megan Markle mm -hmm. giving the same speech as Kate Middleton. And like the technology exists for that mm -hmm. to be fake and people are picking it apart, people like, oh, that's it's glitchy. I don't, I don't know if it's fake or real. I have no idea. But like clearly we have a reason to like question it. And I, what I'm really scared about technology with AI is that like we are not, we're like, we're months, may, maybe a year, but months away from not knowing what to believe, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of what's out there. And if we can't believe anything, then what can we believe? And that sounds like fucking chaos. Do you not remember the ads or the billboards for um, Black Mirror the last season? And they were like, you're now in it. Yeah. And like it was just a reflection, like a mirror. And like it's that's how I feel is that we don't know what's real and what's not yeah. based off of it's AI technology. Scary. We need to start saying, wait, time out. Hold on. Before our society just like fucking crumbles to fucking nothing. We need to start saying, wait, what? We need to put some some laws on this shit because we need to be able to trust and, the fucking and shit that's out there. who's going to put the laws on people that we can trust? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. I don't have the answers. Do you I know. What I mean? I'm, it's crazy. I, I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but I'm yeah, just like, I, know. Uh, no, I don't I know. think but we have we're going to get there. We have to try. We can't just say it's impossible. <clears throat> well, I, I think know. it's yeah. funny because they've been using deep fake technology for years and then it mm -hmm. wasn't, it didn't really become prominent until the Taylor Swift situation happened right? to where it was like, oh wait, they can do this. This is not real what you're watching. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It just it yeah. freaks me out. Because That's very scary. Well, obviously our yeah. hearts go out to Kate Middleton and her family if she is dealing with this diagnosis. And it's really sad that it came to this where now, even now, everyone's questioned the authenticity because, again, it's a boy who cried wolf situation. Like, yeah. why should anyone be like, oh, you know what? Now she's telling the truth. Or not, not even she. I don't even think it's a her thing. You know, because it could be people speaking for her. And mm -hmm. if it is a deep fake, it, you know, it, and it's sad. It's sad that we even have to question this. But like, that's the, that's the state of the world that we're in right now. And mm -hmm. that's the technology that is available for people who want to mislead us to mislead us. And it's fucking crazy. Coming to a government near you. Yeah. Anyways, protect <laughs> our kids. That's really my big <clears throat> Thing. I just wish someone could have the solution. Like I, I think, I, I think mm -hmm. the only thing that I would disagree on is I think that m most people collectively think this is a problem and are scared, and there's a level of anxiety around it. But it's like it's just like what is this, how well, it's so. I do think it kind of starts so at the fast. community level. I think like yeah. I mean, I hope that like when River is old enough to go to school, we can find and like listen. Like not everyone is lucky enough to be able to afford anything other than like publicly funded school systems. And I hope the local communities are doing this uh, at the like public. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a public school kid. Loved public school, mm -hmm. but like as a community, we have to like be like, all right, hey, as these parents of this community, what should we do? Because yeah, if our you know, if, if at a higher level, they're not going to do that, but like elementary schools, no cell phones, middle schools, no cell phones, you know, put it away. You know, those, you know, when you would go to like movie screenings and they'd give us that little pouch that was like sealed yeah. and you put your phone in, they can do that in a school system. Well, I think Kid they're shows talking up, about phone that. goes in, yeah. eight hours, unplugged, socialize. Mm -hmm. And it, honestly, it sounds like the kids these days would well, would welcome that, but but the, they have a fear of being left out. It's like, until you make every kid not stay off their phone, no kid will. Yeah. I agree. There's a, I don't know what it's called, but I heard mm -hmm. some parents talking about it on a podcast. There's a dummy smartphone. So it basically has the phone capabilities, but 
there's I don't know if it's it blocks the Internet or whatever. And they and obviously that's a privilege, but they switch their kids out. So when yeah. they go to school, they have a phone, but it's they can't go on it. So it's or like, like bring back flip phones. You know, if you yeah. want your kid to be able to text mm-hmm. mom and dad and like have access to your kids, flip phones. Yeah. Bam. You know, why do they need fucking smartphones for That's fucking what minors? I was saying. Yeah. Right. We all recognize that like social media is a dopamine hit. It's a fucking drug. It's the iPad kids. What you're saying. Yeah. They were born with iPads mm-hmm. and now they have TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. But they're all uh, they're all drugged up little zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiled all... little zombie. But yeah. I think we can all agree that's like that's. Yeah, no one like we are so much more aware of our mental health and we're so much more tapped into normalizing therapy and all these things. And yet we as a society, our mental health is worse where the the suicidal rates are like through the roof, like pick a demographic. They're up. I was like when I was a kid, I was using makeup that came out of a box, blues, pinks. It was like it's all all in one. And then now it's like watching the TikToks where it's like the 10 year olds being like, got to get drunk elephant, $75 moisturizer for anti-aging. Crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. honey, you won't see a wrinkle for another decade. Well, and, and also they're using because also when the adult influencers are saying like this retinol, whatever, also kids are using things they do not need. Like kids don't need, you need, you don't a, need set of, a set of your, yeah. moisturizer. Yeah. Like, just after, the, like, like yeah. I mean, how sad is it that 11 year old girls are that self-aware and self-conscious about their image or their body or anything? That's fucking crazy. I know, bring back the awkward phase. I lo- I enjoyed my awkward phase. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> Anyways, all right. This sorry, has been I'm super like, uplifting. Like, you know what? You need to use you need to use stain knives, <laughs> like, apricot <laughs> scrub, and, learn, and, learn the hard way, and humble yourselves, <laughs> yeah. children. All right. All right. Uh, anything else before we get into Bravo Land? Or uh, no? <sighs> Let's go for Hearts it. Go out to that Kate. Was... <laughs> if you're saying so, it sounds so great. Oh my god, I think I she's sick. Yeah, I I think she's sick. But someone on C- there, the CNN had a couple doctors on that even like poked holes in how how she talked about her diagnosis i don't know it sounds fishy. i mean yeah. she might be but uh like the, the, that video of like they were at the farmer's market and she was good it's like but she's saying i'm not no. trying to i'm not trying to poke holes either but like i'm just saying like you guys are trying to play it off like she's fine her and william were seen out she was like a foot taller than she normally is but yeah like, i don't know they're i don't having, know having like fake people like walk it's <laughs> it's fucking crazy well, i believe that wasn't her exactly. i think i think that was fully that's, that's so, that was and weird. all of a sudden we're supposed to be like <gasps> we're at fault our, we we should I'm never. Not, speculate. Yeah, I'm not gonna apologize because I speculated that this woman wasn't her. Like, I'm my heart goes out to her if she's sick, but like that she's sick. <laughs> if I, I believe that she's yeah. sick, but like, but I'm not gonna like apologize for calling out a blatant fake woman. That's like not her. Like, sorry. Yeah. Anyways, all right. <laughs> no, I mean, I agree. No, I agree with that too. I think yeah. that's let's weird. Get, uh, let's start. Let's 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 start off light. Let's let's start out with Summer House. Oh. That's that's a good warm up. Okay. <laughs> so what eventually will be like a, a fun a fun conversation yeah. with these ladies. Question uh, for you, Nick. Yes. Would you choose Lindsay if you had to survive in the wilderness? Probably. I mean, uh-huh. Lindsay I, is a survivor, if nothing else. She she doesn't back down from a fight. She's got bravery. You know, a little. Uh, yeah, no, like someone who probably want on my side if I'm surviving in the wilderness. Why do you ask? Sierra, well, I know they went Sierra thinks that Lindsay would eat her. <laughs> I do. Well, I mean, I think if, it if came the down scenario to is you have no supplies, <laughs> it's the two of you, and eventually someone's going to have to eat the other, then yeah, I might, I might not pick Lindsay. Okay. Yeah. I would also volunteer myself to go. Wait, yeah, I have I was no like, survival I would, skills at all. I wouldn't want to be in that. I'd be like, sure, knock yourself the fuck out. If I'm stuck here, whatever, I'm over it. Yeah, I'm honestly, not, just kill me now. I'm not, yeah. gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna survive this anyway. So yeah, knock yourself out. That I Feast said. away. It's like preppers that I'm like, why though? Like, let's just. What is on the other side of <laughs> what, this? Like, what? What, what are you trying to survive for? For like to come out to nothing being there and to be starting civilization? I don't no, need that you. responsibility. Yeah, why are they no, camping? thank you. Is that just like that's, that's cause that summer house? But if it's, let's just do weird shit. No, I don't know. Oh, them camping in the background. I think that's cute. Flashing each other. It's like giving like um kids birthday party like as an adult with alcohol. I used to ca- I used to camp in my backyard. Exactly. Yeah, how old are you? Well, you know, sometimes... but I would do that with a group of friends. <laughs> okay, I would be the first one to be like, you know, I'm going to bed. No, I, yeah, I would be like, I tent, there's a goddamn bed inside. This no, is stupid. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was young, and like, but and every morning I woke up and it was like kind of wet. Yeah, and... And you're like, you got a stuffy <laughs> nose. Everything's damp. It's, ugh. it's like a hot, yeah. but like wet. I don't Fucking, know. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> I would, I would pick Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay can get shit done. She like, can. She's, she's like very like go getter and all that. You know. Who is the guy who wants to have sex with Paige? Uh, Jesse Solomon. Yeah, he's gross. 
<laughs> not a fan. Well, his big like thing was just like, I like to go after girls with boyfriends. It's like, okay, you're fucking lame. Never. It's giving insecurity. Like, that's an odd play. Like, why? He only gets girls because he's super tall. Mm -hmm. Put that face on a guy who's 5'10". <laughs> you know, totally different <laughs> life. He has a good smile, too. Uh, yeah, I don't think, I think he's handsome. I don't even think it has anything to do with that. I just think it's a weird thing to do. You know she's in a relationship. What's the point? Yeah, no, he sucks. Mm. Do you know him? Have you met him? No. Uh, who's the guy who, uh, who's the funny? Uh, West. Yeah. Love yeah. him. Best edition. He seems to be like. Is he the like sweaty him. one? Yeah. The, the short, short little sweaty yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. He's Poor funny. guy. The he's, one. Yeah. The I think he's serious. hilarious. Yeah, he's uh, going after. He's got, he, I don't know. He's got some, uh, per, like, he's got something. He's got some sauce. Mm -hmm. some swag. He definitely yeah. has some riz. Yeah. yeah. Some riz. As, as the kids say. As kids say. He's got riz. Yeah. yeah. I get uh, it. What is your take on the Lindsay Carl situation? Oh, I think I mean, it's a bummer. I um I was just getting caught up and I I think that it's really problematic to weaponize someone's drug problem when they are sober. Mm -hmm. Particularly, okay, so it sounds like he's Cali sober to me, right? So you're smoking weed but no hard drugs and no alcohol? Yes. But like if that's what's going on when you're like you're on drugs, it's weed, but you're insinuating then the type of drugs that he had a problem with, which I just don't think there's any space for that. And it seems to me like she's feeling defensive about her drinking. And when he brings it up and is and I don't think he's like trying to talk shit to her either. I think he's like, hey, we should talk when you're sober. This isn't productive. Mm. And then to do that is like mm. it's like she gets triggered by it when it's because yeah. it's an insecurity for her. Yeah. But all like the whole cast is like pointing out this to Lindsay. Every every episode I'm watching, I'm waiting for. It's like when I kept pointing out that, like, when I first started watching Vanderpump, I was always like, before Katie and I became friends, I was like, Katie is like the only normal person in this <laughs> cast, and I was like, you know, riding hard for Katie. And then you get a couple of Vanderpump friends, like, you have to go back and watch all these other seasons. I go back and watch. I'm just like waiting where for like crazy Katie to show up, and like it just doesn't ever happen. It's always like this normal, level headed, like well thought out, like well... you know. For the most part. I like, mean, I have my moments that are like not course, so everyone savory. Has, everyone has their moments, but like relative to your peers. Okay. Katie. Okay. You've been, <laughs> I'm not disagreeing. Uh, and then I'm, just, I'm waiting for the moment where like maybe there's like, a, okay, well, I see where Ka uh, what, what Lindsay was talking about, where I'm like on Katie's, like I, I understand her plight in, in terms of like why she came on this show and completely it, like just ignored all of her behavior or the commentary and like for all the people like and i remember when Lindsay came on the show some of the like the discourse that followed at least from her peers doing interviews was kind of like just wait just watch the season you'll mm -hmm. get all your answers and they said this all with confidence and meanwhile we're like hey Lindsay, thanks for sharing your truth here on the on the vile files and it turns out her peers like and if and if and this isn't like an editing thing, there's no way all of her peers would be like, just wait, you know, you'll see, and it come to fruition. Quite the opposite of like everyone's going to turn on uh, Ariana, which seems to be like falling on everyone's faces <laughs> this season. Uh, but yeah, it, they all nailed it. How do you think she feels watching? I would back? love to know. I would love Lindsay if you're out there, if you're listening, come back <laughs> on the show. I would love to know like what, like what does she, like why, 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 why was this her PR strategy? Well, she you know. did double down the first time and was like, I just didn't use the right words when she originally accused him of being on drugs the first weekend. So it's also kind of like she's watching it and still feels, I think, justified in her reaction to it. She's saying, like, I felt how I felt, but I didn't use the correct wording where my question would be like, well, then what is the correct wording when you're talking to somebody who's been sober off of harder drugs for a longer period of time? Like, wouldn't we just blatantly call out the weed if that was the issue versus like what are you on well then every time you get upset with them like that's the thing you go for mm -hmm. you know to like attack their history or you know or if, let's say carl does get upset or raises his voice like we are still humans i know it's 2024 and we're supposed to like you know watch our words and be careful and not be toxic but sometimes couples get upset and sometimes feelings get activated and sometimes tensions are raised and sometimes you raise your voice a little bit and that's not the end of the world like there's a difference between getting upset and fighting or 
you know, coming out and screaming and, and saying, fuck you and, and using hurtful and abusive words or like fighting with your partner. Mm-hmm. You know, that's yeah. still allowed these days. And it seems like Carl and Lindsay sometimes fight. And every time he does, he gets fucking attacked for doing something he's just not doing. And it's like crazy. And I just want to know what Lindsay has to say. This is a reunion I'm very <laughs> excited to watch. Right. Yeah. I, and I'm also like, you you only have the weekend. So I'm also kind of like, could we do this Monday through Thursday versus like the only time that your life is captured on camera? Yeah. They, they, they definitely seem down to have this conversation on camera. You know, I, I mean, it's just it's just a weird it's weird timing, I would say, where I'm just like you literally only film three days, two days a week. So why are we having this argument? Well, it seems like they're I mean, obviously, they're all partying a lot on the weekends. And I think that it's a known fact that when you're drunk or going out like those kinds of fights are more explosive because you're not necessarily your yeah. level headed self. You're on your reptilian complex by the time you're wasted. So, yeah. and I think that also is, uh, coming from personal experience um, with like filming and when you're like with a partner like that and you there's a lot of disagreements and discourse in your relationship when you have like cameras on you and you're around your friends it's like you both kind of want to like get validation from other people that you're right so Mm -hmm. it kind of exasperates the issues and you tend to fight a little bit more on camera and around your friends because it's like see this is what she does this is what's happening and then like the other person gets defensive and like it it does like kind of like um well, I, it makes sense because like in any relationship, you know, when you fight with your partner, there's always like there's a little, you know, for all the gaslighting we use, like when that's why I always, always say like for all our, we use that word like fucking crazy because I've never been in a fight with any partner, including Natalie, who mm-hmm. like we I'm very fortunate for how much we communicate and don't get along. But every once in a while, we're not on the same page. And when we're not on the same page, you know what I feel? I feel fucking crazy. I feel it's like, how mm. can you not understand what I'm saying? And you know what she mm. feels? She feels fucking crazy. And she feels like, how can you not understand what I'm saying? So that makes a lot of sense that when you have cameras and your friends there, it's a way to like validate because you always, that's, that's why you're fighting with your partner because you're not on the same page because you're saying one thing that makes a ton of sense. And they're like, no Mm -hmm. you know and then that seems like well how can you not understand what i'm saying because our reptilian brains right you know like they always say like once you're fighting for five minutes it's not you anymore it's it's your child self yeah it's like you're and that's why sometimes when you have a personality like Lindsay or or like me sometimes where i can say fucked up things that i don't mean like that's when you say things you're like ah yeah (laughs) and i'm not like excusing or trying to make excuses for anybody or like myself or you know like but that's when those things happen. Okay. No, that makes sense. And I think it's like probably like there's probably other, obviously other issues and other things are happening. Again, we don't see them seven days a week, 365. So why isn't Paige on it more? Is it just because her boyfriend's not there as much or she's just like slow playing it out? Cause like she's, I mean, some episodes she's just like not there. And she had like a, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she, she's a great character. I mean, she had a nice little moment with uh, Carl talking about her rent in New York. With Craig? Craig, Craig, Craig Carl, yeah. not Carl, she, sorry. She yeah. pays $8,500 a month. <laughs> yeah, fuck, man. Insane. Going up to nine. It's New York. I mean, yeah, but I feel like New York, you can also, there's definitely places that are cheaper, but um, her place is really nice. Yeah, she's, she lives in a beautiful place. She's building. in a really nice place. Um, But damn. Yeah. I mean, and I get like, why Craig wouldn't want to pay because it's like he has his own place they split time so it's like he shouldn't and I understand her not wanting him to contribute to the rent because then it's like if something happens it's it's like, that, yeah, I own know. one point or one third of your of your apartment like yeah. no but also like how they've been together for like a minute I don't know that I would be doing this like long distance for at some point I'd be like either like you're or well, what's what's the end game? Because it sounds like I mean. she's not moving to Charleston. And is he's he... not... didn't he say there's like he said if it'll de- work out, decent chance they don't work out or something. I what was the exact uh, quote? He said. I mean, I would never be opposed to like a long distance thing, but it, it, I have to put a cap on it. I mean, to be you fair, need, you need yeah. strategy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this it's, is like crazy. He said it's to very me. probable. So that's what he said. It's very probable that what? It's very probable you'd be naive to think oh it'll just work out. That, that's so a, a little is that a double negative. Kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, a it's very bit. probable. There's a good chance that <laughs> it doesn't work out. So he's yeah. basically saying you. like it's probable they'll break up. There's a good chance it won't work out. I think. Yeah. That's what I'm like you. That's yeah. sad. Yeah. They do they're, seem like they're, they're I know, I mean, they're, they're, but like she. 
I feel like in that situation, though, like uh, it, it's one or the other has to give up something. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah, they they're, recognize their own stubbornness. They're, they're well, they're doing what? Uh, what did she say? They see each other four days a week, maybe, and they they switch going back and forth. The longest they go without is like a week and a half or something like that. But I mean, Paige's whole industry or work is in New York. Her home, her family's in New York. Craig, his whole life, his business is based out of Charleston. So I'm like, even even if she were to move to Charleston, for example, I don't see a world in which she's not spending multiple days in New York. Mm -hmm. So what difference does it make if she moves down there or if they just both have two places and are spending the time between it? I mean, if it if this is working for them, but it's like I feel like at some point push comes to shove. Well, long distance Mm -hmm. can work for a long time for some couples because it does give you that like that space you can miss each other and if you can afford to see each other on a regular basis and fly then like it's like you're always like missing your part you never get sick of your partner but either way to katie's point eventually like it, you can't do if, that forever if there's talk that like eventually one of us then it's in your mind that like this isn't like a permanent situation that like eventually you know but no one's <laughs> I think they're just going to wear one. I think one of them is just going to get worn down. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Craig's the one who believes in aliens and like pandas aren't real people yes. or real uh, animals. Huh? Or, tinfoil yeah, hat. Tinfoil Wait, hat. Wait, he doesn't think that pandas are real? He no. thinks that they're people in dressed costumes. in suits. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, he said this? Yeah. Yes. Oh, this Multiple the, times. This is the yeah. tinfoil thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tinfoil hat. Okay, yes. okay wait. I'm sorry. How do we all feel about aliens? Oh, they're real. They're yeah. real. Yeah. So real. I don't think that's crazy. Beyond speaking, there's yeah. no yeah, way. They, like, they, the panda thing. Okay. I think they to what degree? Us. But is there like intelligent life somewhere in the universe outside of here? For Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I believe that there's aliens among us. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Men in black situation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. totally. I, I wish it was a little bit more like that, but like something like that. Is Tom Sandoval an alien? I have to assume some of the bad dating choices I've made, like those Aliens. people, let's just chalk it up to that. Maybe no, it's like a little if, tiny thing driving Black, someone around in the if men in Black's <laughs> a man thing, suit. Tom Sandoval is an alien. He's the most he's not, alien. He's not cool enough. No. Wait, yeah. well, you you're think giving, all aliens giving, are going to be you cool? Say, you just said intelligent life, and you want to say that Tom Sandoval? <laughs> intelligent life means like it's not like a vegetable. Or, Ugh, come you're on. giving him too no, much yeah. credit. Intelligent life doesn't mean intelligent. Like Aliens have seen things. <laughs> Done things can can explain things. You don't yeah. think they could be dumb Ita- uh, aliens? No, a human race is the dumbest form of intelligent life there is. How do you know that? I I agree. I'm just I'm. Just, let's just face it. Do you well, look what we're doing to our planet. Yeah, sure. How expansive the universe? Like how tiny our galaxy is within. It's it's just so vast. Maybe, there's no way. There's I bet there's another civilization that has phones figured out. Honestly. Probably, probably, but I'm saying there. It. But there's also another <laughs> civilization that just get, is getting started. You know, well, and they okay, are okay. Fa- sure. And maybe but I'm ta- I'm talking about if compa- like if we're gonna compare, like, similar to us. Yeah. I'm not talking about like plans or whatever, but I'm talking about. <laughs> so Tom Sandoval you know isn't smart enough about. to be an alien. You know what yes. I'm talking about. Like another you, type of not human form, but like in a comparable form. Yeah, they're not. They're way smarter than we are. Agreed. That's, well, yeah, they would have to get here. So if Tom Sandoval is in fact an they, alien, they, that would require a level of intelligence. They got that here and they flew here on a on a on a ship that we couldn't even comprehend. But maybe because we're stupid. Maybe <laughs> our ozone isn't conducive with Tom Sandoval's ozone, and that's affecting the oxygen <laughs> or <laughs> to his brain. That's a reach. And he just can't and help that's, him. That's and why that's he just... why he's just like, hey, man, like, you know, here's how you give a homeless person $100. <laughs> that was fucking wild. Oh, that was <sighs> disgusting. We talked about it on Disrespect. On, did did you? Ugh. Yeah, we'll go check that out. Every Wednesday, by the way, this uh, award-winning show, Disrespectfully, is on every Wednesday. Go check award-winning? it out. Award-winning? Yeah. I don't know about that. It's award... I. I gave it the best podcast of the year award. Okay, look, we're going to get all the awards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give us a little time. Yeah. Maybe we've never been ghosted. Maybe they've just unzipped their man suit and they had to <laughs> pop back to their planet. <laughs> yeah. But time was yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. That's, no. That is still being ghosted. That's being <laughs> abandoned. <laughs> Gooder. Are you looking for glasses that are $25? They don't slip, they don't bounce. And they're 100% polarized and they look cool. If you're on YouTube, look at Nick's face right now. He has on a pair of gooder blue light lenses. Just a wide variety of really cool glasses. If you would have told me these glasses were $100, I'd believe you. If you told me they were $500, I'd believe you. Because you know what? All glasses look the same. And some of you are spending 
hundreds of dollars in glasses that you scratch, break, lose, all of the above. And you're going to do the same with the Gooder glasses. But the difference is they're only $25. That's literally the only difference between Gooder glasses and all the other high-end, expensive, waste-your-money glasses that you're spending right now. They're lightweight, comfortable, 100% polarized, stylish. The list goes on. In addition, they give you a one-year warranty, which seems ridiculous because it's $25 glasses. But hey, you still get a one-year warranty. A 30-day free returns. Also, They what? also, when you put them on your head, you know what I'm saying, to like put, put the hair back, they don't pull your hair like some glasses do and mess up your hairstyle. Isn't that right, Allie? Mm -hmm. Gooder was made for me. A forgetful person who loses things constantly. When it comes to $25 glasses, I can't tell the difference. It's like one of those like uh, blind soft drink tests. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Stop paying for the label and just pay $25 for gooder glasses. Great for running, cycling, working out, golfing, going to the beach, hiking, or just chilling. From exercise to errands to sunset, I love, we love Gooder. Gooder. They even have ski goggles, and those can cost a ton of money. If you want to support the show and pick up a pair, Gooder is giving the Vile Files listeners free shipping on your first order. You can go to gooder.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code V-I-A-L-L to get free shipping. Uh, Gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Find your pair at Gooder. That's G-O-O-D-R dot com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code V-I-A-L-L to get free shipping. Vessi. We gotta love Vessi. Vessi is making the most comfortable, the dry shoes on the land. You can walk anywhere and your feet will be comfortable and dry. I don't care if you're walking inclement weather in the cities of, that you live in, maybe New York, Chicago. We all know all you New York and Chicago, Toronto, Seattle, uh, Seattle. Whew, boy, even California, it's been rainy. But wherever you are, if you are a walker and you are tired of damp, soggy feet from going to point A to point B, you got to get yourself a pair of Vessi. Or maybe you are a traveler, the perfect traveling shoe, because who knows what you're going to get into on your traveling escapades. Or maybe you are sick and tired of carrying a, an extra pair of shoes in your bag. Yeah, not with Vessi. Vessi has a great selection of sneakers from your classic, you know, all whites to your more fun and stylish Shoes. There's something for everyone when it comes to Vessi. They actually just came out with a Stormburst high top. Nick loves a high top. They are actually super cute. They're easy on and off, so you can just slip them on. You don't have to, like, sit down, tie your shoe. You know what I'm saying? They also have removable insoles for arch support. They're perfect fit for all-day comfort. Yeah, the Stormbursts are great. Super comfortable, look cool, and most importantly dry. So, get yourself a pair of Vessi today. They're also not uh, water resistant. No, they're waterproof. Waterproof. Yeah. Elevate your spring wardrobe travel with Vessi Stormburst shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get your pair today and get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to step out in style, rain or shine. Again, that's Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Quince. Invest in your closet. Stop wasting money. Get yourself some stylish pieces. Why why waste money on a three hundred dollar cashmere sweater when you can get one for fifty bucks? Or leather jackets. You can spend hundreds, thousands of dollars on leather jackets. Not at Quince. No, 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 no. All Quince items are priced fifty to eighty percent less than similar brands. That's basically free. They only work with factories that are safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Allie, you have actually a lot of pieces from Quince that I, every time you wear them, I'm like, wait, I love that. That is so cute. Will you tell us about it? So I have Quince active wear. I have a Quince midi length skirt. I have a Quince halter top, crop top situation. Is that the one that you wore to our, our um, team dinner that looks so cute? It was. It yeah, was. I thought so. It was indeed. Because I said it's a special occasion and I feel good and I look good and it was so affordably priced. I must show it to the world. Absolutely. Picture a wardrobe upgrade with quality essentials at an unbeatable price. Quince has you covered with timeless pieces that never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L. 
All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into Vanderpump. Oh, I'm, uh, no. so, this, this is it's been a wild week. You've been in the news. Your peers can I here's how I, I here's I just want to say. Yeah. How, this is how I as a fan of the show and watching this show. To me, this whole season is about two different groups. Group A, you and Ariana. And then group B, everyone else. And this is a season about boundaries. And as we point out on this show, especially Ask Nick, boundaries, like people love talking about boundaries nowadays. Boundaries, 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 blah, blah, blah. it's like the hit thing. But like we forget that boundaries, what they are, are like something that every, that when you set a boundary, they are by definition inconvenient to the people you set boundaries with because boundaries are you limiting access of some kind to people who aren't used to limiting access, used to having something from you. And then you finally say, you know what? I'm no longer doing that. I'm no longer giving you access to X, Y, or Z. And so everyone hates a new boundary when it's being set. Someone, you know, they're like, hey, this is my new personal boundary. I don't want to do this anymore. It's just a personal choice. And if someone else used to have that access that they're no longer going to get, they're going to fucking hate it. And you have an entire group of people People who are who are throwing a temper tantrum but because you and ariana are just like hey i'm just sending a new boundary i'm just like no longer gonna fuck with these people and instead of just being like yeah that makes sense i understand they are just losing their fucking minds and they're trying to poke the pettiest of holes <laughs> uh and and you and ariana for the dumbest of shit you know it's just like when did adult people have to get you know when when they had any news whatsoever like when I get a job or booked for a show or something, I don't get on the phone and text in a group chat all of my friends like, hey, guess what? Like doing a new show with Patty Stanger. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have a friend call me up and be like, why didn't you, why did I have to find that out about on fucking Instagram? Meanwhile, like according to Lala and Sheena, it's like a capital fucking punishment that Ariana didn't like tell them like her life plan. And just one example of the pettiness that is your cast because you two are setting boundaries this season. Shush. <laughs> I don't know what you have to say about that. Which part? The <laughs> boundaries, 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 boundaries. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. Typically people who have issues with boundaries are people who've never had boundaries um themselves. Or they're just uh are hypocritical. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh it's been challenging to listen to feedback or hear people, you know, misinterpret what those boundaries mean and what they are in place because they just think that they're you know we're trying to control when people confuse boundaries with control that's also like an issue because it's well, like no, no no everyone's free to make decisions and move in life how they choose but what they didn't understand is that i will also act accordingly and with in terms of like protecting yeah. myself these are these are boundaries to protect me exactly. from the crazy that surrounds me the, season 11 is about growing up or not growing up and you have a bunch of people who want to pretend that they're growing up mm -hmm. and are not like and that's what's so crazy to me is this like going back to the reunion of season 10 <laughs> you were one, the most quiet person you have been ariana's ride or die her her best friend through this all and yet at the reunion you, you know you said your piece you said what needed to be said but you had james you had lala you had sheena fucking screaming mm -hmm. at rachel and what now appears to be you know, I don't know, performative outrage. Because it's just like, how do you say some of the horrific things that you said to Rachel? And then all of a sudden, like, be like, okay, well, and it what's fascinating watching Vanderpump back is because like throughout the years, right? Some of your castmates, Jax and, and Tom and, you know, have done some crazy fucking things. And it's just like, they've done some things that many people in many fan groups would be like, I can't, all right, can't be friends with you anymore. But it's like in Vanderpump world, as long as you just scream at them <laughs> and yell at them, then like the next day there's a scene where everyone's hanging out again. And like in reality, that's fucking crazy. And I feel like you two are just finally like, you know what? We did this for a while. In the past, we could scream and get over it. But now it's just like, no, I'm, I'm actually just like, you guys are choosing to like make different life choices yeah, and grow up and in, they're not. In the past, that, that kind of like was what we would do. And somehow we're like, yeah, we always got through it. We always would forgive each other. And that's just like how things were. And it's like, yeah, but like that doesn't really work for me anymore. Mm -hmm. That's like really not the kind of friendships I want. That's not how I want to like be in life. Like I, what worked when I was like 26 does not work for me at 38. Mm -hmm. And the fact that y'all are still thinking that's okay, like, uh, I knock yourselves out but like I just can't anymore I'm sorry I'm also not sure why it's such a hard concept to grasp because I'm very much this way if I do not 
fuck with someone I'm like, I'm never going to tell anyone, don't be friends with them, but you will not see me as much. If you're spending time with them, that's totally fine. Knock yourself out. You do that. But I'm going to remove myself from the situation. Like, that's how you protect. That's a boundary. That's how you protect your peace. So I don't know why everyone is so up in arms. And then especially accusing Ariana of telling people not to be friends. She's not saying that, but she's like, yeah, yeah then I will is. not be spending time with because you. Because look at what, because this is what it is. She's like, I don't want him to have access to my life. I don't want him to know. I don't want to know what he's doing. I don't want him to know what I'm doing. What does, what happens like the minute Sheena goes to Tom Sandoval after she saw Ariana? Oh, I heard about your sexy single party. She basically just goes and like repeats what Ariana just told her yep. to Tom Sandoval. That's exactly what Ariana is talking about, what she doesn't fucking want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The access, the the rumor mills, the, the gossip, the, the the meshing of worlds and lives. Like Ariana wants it to be completely, entirely separate. She doesn't want Sheena going. Well, I just feel like I just talked to Ariana, and this is like how she yep. feels. She would really like an apology. That's what she doesn't fucking want. So that's why she's saying, if you want to be his friend, go ahead, but keep that between yourselves. Mm-hmm. Don't involve me in it. That's where I'll remove myself. That's what she's talking about. So like because Sheena can't like figure that one out and other people can't figure that one out that's why i'm essentially like oh, it's probably not gonna be a friend yeah <laughs> well what's that i'm just jumping right to the i point. said last week that i thought that sheena should pick tom uh <laughs> because i think that ariana and you have outgrown sheena and are maturing in a way that sheena is just not and i think that for all the best friend conversations or you know, between Ariana and, and Sheena, that it honestly seems like Sheena and Tom Sandoval have way more in common. Their values are way more in line. And to me, from outsider looking in, because I don't, you know, there's probably a lot about those friendships I don't know. It just seems like it, honestly, as sad as that might be for Sheena and Ariana, it's just, to me, it makes more sense that Tom and Sheena will be the ones who will still be friends when it's all said and done. What do you have to say to that? I don't necessarily disagree. I don't think she, I think she'll still try to, you know, show, yeah, no, show sure up for sure. Ariana. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, and, and I don't see Ariana as being like so ruthless to be like. Yeah, I don't know. know. I'm not speaking what, what, what Ariana would do, but just but, the principle that like, yeah. honestly, when it comes down to it, it just seems like they have more in common and they have more similar interests and similar values and they prioritize the same things where you and Ariana this season make are making the tough choice of being like of suggesting that maybe you've outgrown the show. The, I don't know. I don't know either. But like it's I, I find it to be very interesting as a viewer to watch because like finally we're like it's not fun to watch you guys all like at Lisa Vanderpump's bar bartending. It's fun to see some people in your group grow up and some people not. And like because that's life. That happens in every friend group out there is that mm-hmm. some people just like want to not let go of the old days you know they want to <laughs> bring it back the group oh, we got to save the group and some people are like that's fucking weird dude we used to do that eight years ago yeah i, I mean I, when i'll hear comments or people talking i don't know about the episodes and people are like well everyone has cheated or back in like season one or two i'm just like why are we talking about that long ago like i get it if you want to make draw the comparisons but it just doesn't apply in life today. I mean, like, our lives are a lot broader than that. So I like, get you could do that all day, but that's just not where many of us, mm, no. some of us are at anymore. I also don't anymore. think there's an apple to apple comparison. No. That's what always bothers me about that. It's like, yeah, everyone's done some shady shit. But again, usually when you're much younger and yeah. this was a different thing. So it's just we don't need to be comparing it. Or being like held to a standard that I didn't hold at 20 that I now yeah. hold in my 30 is that it's like, Okay, I've grown and learned. What? Mm-hmm. Why are you still repeating the same mistakes for the last decade? Yeah. Do you think you're a miserable person? Oh. <laughs> no, I was at the time. Like, I, I'm not miserable, but I was not happy. I was not also, somebody that like that. Even if you were, is that a crime? No. no what is I'm, Lala's point? I <laughs> that always gets me. I think that's like such a weird trope for you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, just like you said, have we? Has everyone not had times in their life when you were not your best self and possibly could be considered toxic or miserable yeah like but that's not fundamentally who you are at all also in saying having a boundary and being able to force it and like being forced to be the one of the few adults in a friend group isn't doesn't mean you're miserable it just means you are willing to make the fucking tough choices that other people aren't like 
Yeah. You know, no fun Katie doesn't mean she's miserable. Of course, you know, I'm not saying you're no fun. I'm you're plenty of fun. You had six I, margaritas I'd say yesterday. You're the happiest I've ever seen. You, you. went on a friend oh. date. Like, that's fucking vulnerable. Um, like, you are making tough choices. No, seriously, you're making real life tough choices that aren't easy to do because it's hard to grow up and it's hard to mature. It's hard to out- outgrow your friends. It's hard to look at your friends and say, we don't have this, we don't have the same values anymore. We've yeah. outgrown each other. And then to go on a fucking date with a friend. <laughs> No, that's a, no, but we need to do more but, of that, and I think we have to acknowledge that. Truthfully, I've been, I am, I love my life, and I've been like really happy, um, and for like I don't know the last like year, I've had some like stressful shit going on, obviously, but I think you know this like new chapter in life and this like transition that I've made to like really kind of like design my life and like invite new people into my life and embrace friendships that you know I've like been really excited and um, happy to have. And feel like I'm really grateful for it in my life. And I don't know, just again, like through my healing journey of, you know, kind of um, come to like a agreement with myself with the standard of people I want to have in my life. And if this character doesn't meet the criteria, I'm just going to like no. not have that. And like, yeah, I have build up boundaries. And is Lala projecting, yeah. perhaps? I, I don't I don't know what's happening there. I, I, to be honest, it feels like it's a one sided situation. And I'm like me and Sheena. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't I, I, I don't know like Lala and I were like really not, fine not. I was at her house a couple weeks ago back to back days for her gender reveal so where's for this Ocean's coming birthday. from I don't know I mean like yeah the reunion was a tough day and there was some like shit that was brought up but like um I don't know because I, I it started I guess because after, I don't know if it was after the reunion or before but she was talking on her podcast about how we had like a falling out going into the season and I don't know if that's like retroactively like she's bringing that up but we had a falling out like seven months before the season started and i thought that was like all resolved and we were good what was that that falling out about because honestly this week's episode (sighs) like you guys had to sit down and you were you were like hey i just want to squash this shit and i maybe i wasn't paying attention but i didn't even know what you guys were squashing if we were squashing what happened at Allie's house. Can I ask you about that though? Was that tension building up or is that like a normal aspect of your relationship well i mean that's what we we over this like the summertime we were kind of trying to figure out like why we were like triggered by each other why we were easily triggered and like why we were you know fighting and you know she was like i feel like you know our friendship hasn't been the same like since we had that falling out and i'm like well for me it was just like we both were like well we haven't been spending as much time together like you've been busy with ariana in the shop and i was like yeah and like you and sheena have been like really close and like you bought your house in palm springs that's where you spent all of your free time which is it's fine it wasn't not the same in a bad way, but we just hadn't been prioritizing our friendship. It didn't seem to me that there was like any residual resentment from the falling out. I thought we kind of like addressed everything that had happened, but it was just mainly about the fact that we just hadn't prioritized the friendship. So when I was asked on Watch What Happens Live, like about the falling out, I was like, well, I don't feel like we had one going into filming. I, we had one a while back. So I, I was just confused about the the wording of it all. Well, that makes and sense. she did not like that. <laughs> So, yeah, because she she is like leaning in to this conf- alleged conflict between you two and her and Ariana, and she's going on these talk shows and she's yeah. teasing like the fact that her and Ariana are no longer friends. Do you think it has more to do with the fact that she bought a new house and she just want to make sure that she's just keeping the fucking the money in? You know, like I don't know, she's got I, got a family to feed. You know, I don't know. I'm scared to say I don't know because that's what started this whole thing. I, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what this is about. Like, I don't, I don't know why she, like, she had to post that thing on Instagram and bring my mom into it all. Yeah, that, that was, was weird. Like, like, that was like really fucking hurtful to my mom. Like, don't yeah. do that. Just don't do that. Also, yeah, if you want to talk shit, talk, talk your shit. Why is she bringing it up? Like, I, I, I wasn't going to post this because I love her mom. Like, sorry. To, I don't know. It was weird. It's a, it's just, I'm like, I'm just kind of like weird. I don't really have, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't have much to say because I don't know what is going on. You just, well, it, to me, it's what it seems like is what's going on is you and Ariana just are generally indifferent about hanging out with the group. What group? They don't even <laughs> fucking hang out. I don't know. But when it comes. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't see anybody that I recognized besides Schwartz at the sexy singles pool party. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, but it, just, it seems like, you know, the bond of this, the, I don't know, the ensemble cast is La La uh, recently, like, yeah, we're like, it's like they're mad at you two for being like, ah, you know, it's a new show where I don't really want to do this. And it seems like they're trying to poke little holes 
and make mountains out of molehills, so to speak. Because I went into this season the same way I go into every season, being like, I'm just gonna tell, like, my truth. Be authentic. Yeah. Tell my truth. Like our group is fractured. We're not the same as what we used to be, and I'm not gonna go in and pretend that I. I'm not gonna play pretend with people. And you have you too, like Ariana ha- or or you to my knowledge, have yet to like lose their shit and been like, why are you hanging out with so-and-so? Why are you doing, you haven't questioned anyone doing anything. I mean, anything. I kind of do, but only because Who? when I feel like people have like very shifting opinions, I think they should have a little like Back conviction, home. you know, sure. like like about it. And beyond this, I mean, I know we're like filming a show, but it's also like, but how, like I gotta like, I don't do things that I cannot stand behind. Mm-hmm. So it's like, <laughs> Besides just like when we go to call time, it's like what? What else? What? How? Well, from watch- I don't do things just because I, I'm told to do them. So well, from watching the show too, I have to say like mad respect because I'm like uh, the scene where you're sitting with the girls at lunch and you confront Sheena with the like I don't understand why you can't let this go with uh, wanting to be friends with Tom Sandoval. Mm. Like, I mean, I think it's respectable to where it's like, listen, you can feel how you want to feel, but I just don't understand it. And for some reason, I think people want to paint that as oh, you, you're not happy for it. You won't allow people to do what they want to do. But at the end of the day, you're just like, hey, this person did something fucking terrible and you know it has done it to you. So yeah. why are we now trying? Like, and why do you to disagree. Yeah, and yeah. why do you think that they are trying so hard to like involve Sandoval when they were the ones that were on a campaign against him? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, that's, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, performative outrage. Did, well, yeah, because I, I, I'm not, it's fine if you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I just want to like put my like pitchfork down and what that's if that's what you want to do, then fine. But like there's also not. Yeah, there's consequences or there's going to be another end, another side on that, too, that you need to prepare for just so you know. So if like how strongly do you feel about this? And if your only argument is that, well, like 12 years ago at the upfronts and you're hanging on to that when there's been more recent really despicable things that he's done. Right. And it's like, yeah, but 12 years ago when no one was my friend, well, yeah, but Sheena, in the interim of that, we became really good friends. Yeah, we weren't always really good friends, but like, why are you acting like that was more recent than it was? But like, we all, since, I don't know, since then, like other people showed up for you. Yeah. I showed up for you for a period of time. Like, I don't well, know. I just, Sheena, I just don't know. I on feel the like heels I'm, of uh, I feel like Sheena's... I'm a little crazy. Well, I can I can appreciate that. I would I'd be frustrated for you. <laughs> Do I leave anything out. No, I mean I, I'm not saying anything because I just agree with what you're saying. Like, also, it's just for me, it's kind of a stand on business thing. If you want to be friends with this person, it feels like there's some edging happening or like laying the foundation of you know saying I'm going to keep this person in my life, and that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. But mm-hmm. then you, like you said, not necessarily consequences, but things are going to shift yeah. and that's fine for that to happen, but be prepared for it. After Sheena reminded us that she had an orgy with John Mayer, that <sighs> video popped up from 2009 be- and before she was even on Vanderpump. And you said this video has been like, it comes up every couple of years. I mean, I feel like I've definitely, I've seen this video. It is a few times. the most outrageous interview I have ever seen. As I know in the interview, she's addressing like criticism that she called like Hollywood life on herself. Like how did the story come up? And then she she proceeds to give like an eight minute interview of her hanging out with John Mayer. And she she is loving every minute of it. And she's like, well, I can't really talk about it, but like keep asking me questions. <laughs> 100% chance John Mayer has not spoken her, to her since that interview. Wait, the, the orgy thing, was that on a confessional from this season? Yeah, yeah like last week. She was yeah. like, my we body playing, is a wonderland. Yeah, we were playing Never Have I Ever. And it was like, had a threesome. and. I think Brock like admitted did, whether you drink or something. I don't know. Is that how it works? Yeah. You have, you drink. If you haven't, you don't. And they're like, oh, what? And Sheena also did. And they're like, what? And she's like, she's like, well, it was more of an orgy situation. And then in her like interview or confessional, they're like, so what was that about? She was like, Let's, she first dropped a list celebrity. Yeah. That, that was really important. Well, why I asked is because I wonder how she just like Lindsay earlier. I wonder how she feels watching that back. I don't know. <laughs> it's I, I loved it, though. <laughs> it was awesome. It's eight minutes of just Sheena pretending to not want to answer this reporter's questions and definitely not going anywhere. And then like and then like just waiting for like she's like, where you guys? Did you guys have sex? Well, I can't answer that one. She like would answer every other question, but couldn't answer that because it's personal, which means she's like, <laughs> yes, we've <fucked." laughs> 
Oh. Zero. John Mayer saw that video and was probably like, nope. <laughs> this guy, they, he, there's no way he hung out with her after that, right? How no. could you? How could you feel safe? You know, anyone. If you are dating someone and the next thing you know, they're giving like an exclusive interview. As not your girlfriend. As not your girlfriend, but someone who thinks you're funny and has a good personality. <laughs> and like, and, and just throwing out, like when you have to say there was no cheating, like when you even have to bring that up, you know? I don't know. <laughs> Immediately you're like, wait, well, but where, when, when, like timeline, you know, it's just like... <laughs> The whole thing is such a mess. Can you imagine John waking up that day? Like his I phone. I don't think he probably even saw what what outlet. You don't what, think he saw what? that? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh boy, he saw that. Every you every one so? of his buddies, everyone was sending it to him. I mean, that reporter, she was seasoned. She knew what she she was. She crushed it with her questions. I saw somewhere though that he was asked about her, and he just said no comment. Yeah, so. crushing, devastating, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, regret, immediate regret. You know. Yeah. No. I don't think. I think the the whole discourse is funny because on tomorrow's episode we talk about this. Um, Sheena recently talked about me in a juicy scoop interview, and I mean it was a quick passing comment. She talked about you. Yeah, it really pissed me off. What she like, said. I'm not say? happy about it. She she just brought something up from the past that was unnecessary in my opinion. And at the time, the way that she navigated it, I just didn't appreciate. And like, so she'll so openly talk about like orgies and threesomes and whatever. And um, yeah, we talk about that tomorrow. Tea, go I check know, that right? out. Oh, I'm dying to know. <laughs> I <awesome>. want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Opinions on oh. Tom Sandoval's uh, pool party telling new girls that was he, he chops up uh, chips and feeds it to his the, under the door. Natalie, was, did you we, watch it? No, what the fuck? When I was you watching watch it with I no, I'm behind. Come on, man. <laughs> when I was watching, when we were Natalie and I were watching it, Natalie was like, he's trolling them. He and I was like, I don't know, that's Tom. For sure, like I, he was going down. He's like, "Yeah, uh, my roommate. You, you know, you know, you know who my roommate is. Yeah, my ex girlfriend. Uh, it wasn't a long relationship, just ten years." And everyone's like, "Okay, um, wait, give me context about the chips." What is? She- <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm and then he's that. like, "Yeah, she, you know, she she lives up in the upstairs, but you know, what is it? I, I keep, keep her locked oh, up. I keep, in I, there. I keep her locked up in the room upstairs, but don't worry, I, I crush up chips and I slide them under the door." For her to eat, yeah, it was very like Dahmer vibes, where I was just like, uh, "Why are you? Why is this the route you're going?" But like, what, but, does Tom know he <laughs> comes across like a like a douchebag there? I mean, he, is is he doing it on purpose? Is it like zero game? When he's like, <laughs> "So you guys ever been to Burning Man?" Oh, at forty years old, come on now. <laughs> well, that's what I'm like. You know, even now he was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, being like he's trolling them. Like he he knows he's deliberately trying to sound like a douchebag. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I think that's no, Tom. No, even having not seen that directly, um, anytime he says something shocking, well, that's the unhoused people thing. Like it's he thinks it's no, I know that's have he's you, being authentic. Have you ever trying... seen him? <laughs> the video <laughs> of him at Schwartz and Sandy's where he's dancing, and these girls are just like standing there, like looking at him, and he's like. <laughs> My threshold for secondhand no, embarrassing is so difficult. And yeah, he's like <laughs> basically about to do the worm and everyone and it's not super packed that's, and there's not a lot of people that's dancing. Why when I say to people, <laughs> and again, this is not me defending Tom Sandoval, but when, when people are just like, he's some master manipulator, it's just like, he's Tom Sandoval. Oh, I think he's very manipulative also. I think sure, he, anyone but, can be manipulative, but I don't think he is capable no, of... I don't think he's self-deprecating. That's the thing. I don't think he's like, oh... I'm going to be cringy on yeah. purpose. Like, no, no, no. But I also just don't think he's that sophisticated. Speaking of, like, Rachel slash Raquel, uh-huh. uh, what are your, what's your take on her latest? I've, I'm, I'm, f- I'm officially over her and her, like, just desperation of trying to continue to be the victim in a situation that she's not. But recently, she called out Logan and, yeah. uh, for um, walking in on Rachel and Tom. When we had Brad on way back when... Off the show, Brad told us the same similar story, because, yeah. and he didn't want to throw uh, Logan under the bus. And whatever you think about that relationship or the friendship between Logan and Ariana, I am curious what you have to say about this. But I will just say, Rachel herself, on her, you know, when she's talking about this, she still, when she says, doesn't know for certainty no. that Ariana knows. She goes, she is saying, well, they're best friends, so she must know. I don't know. Maybe she does. It's all speculation. So. 
Rachel is admitting that she has no idea was what information was passed, and yet she is now claiming in the fucking court of law that, that Ariana somehow knew when all she is speaking on is assumptions and conjecture and bullshit. She's not sure that any of these people None. knew anything. She's just assuming, well, they had to have known. They had no, to have known. They were, they were so shady and denied and lied to everybody. Like they were not, They were not as open and whatever is obvious even as they if, think even they if are. you do that's like walking or it's like uh like if kanye and his his is it his wife or his girlfriend or his captain his his captain his captor whatever she, why didn't she bring up ali in that ali saw us at the abbey because you guys denied it hardcore yeah. to right. everybody but just you can't just because people oh, are acting geez. weird or dressing funny or doing weird shit together like people and she also told the story wrong about logan so I, I'm about. I'm, yeah, I'm about to get activated. So oh, first of all, fucking, we're yeah. we're defending Logan 100. percent That is not how it happened. Yeah. Um. We discussed this in depth on the episode tomorrow. So I'll kind of leave it up to that. All I have to say is her version of how it happened is not what happened. At the time, he had no reason to believe something so evil could be going on. He never said anything about that to me. He never said anything about that to Ariana at the time because it didn't even phase him because it didn't seem like what she's described happening happened. Um, so I think that she's taking just like we caught her and Joe and Tom and Tom at the Abbey in, we talked about this too in like September, oh, at, October. At a, another bar, yeah. Yeah, at, at another bar at another time. And at the time, because she was making out with shorts and shit, I thought it was that. I thought it was a shorts thing. But then in hindsight, we were like, oh. So they, first of all, weren't as, weren't as, you know, messy as they they alluded to. But second of all, then if anything came up, they'd be like, what are you you guys? That would never happen. Are you kidding me? Blah, blah, blah. Because they thought their plan was going to come to fruition, which was write it out. Tom and Ariana break up and then eventually they date. So, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> it's giving uh, Sandoval's if only she got in the car and followed me, yeah. she would know. All you had to do is follow me. <laughs> come again. Yeah. I, mean, I just who is who is telling Rachel what to say? Where do you like? It's just so no bizarre. One. No. She's coming up with this in her own delusion, her own reptilian brain. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, at this point, she is 100 percent allowed to talk about her her story. But the way that she paints things is just not how it actually happened. So that's where I have a problem with it. Yeah, no, she just keeps looking like. She's trying desperately to be a victim in and a situation it, where she's not. If she wants it to die, how long are you going to go back and talk about these different things? And each thing serves, at least from what I've seen on TikTok and whatnot, to paint her in a better light and take some of the accountability away. And it's just like, I think it's just I because let's just I, move on. I think I heart's making her. Well, I, I don't know. I've never met Rachel. So she doesn't strike she, me as someone so who. Would you say that she's a sacrificial lamb? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's weird. No, I, I, I think. I, I, she said that she was Bravo sacrificial lamb. No, <laughs> no, you have way she more. A, I, she has way more agency. Exactly. Being she's on an adult. that show. Oh, the, gr the grooming thing made me so mad. So you were a 28, yeah. 29 year old woman. You knew what you were doing. He didn't groom you. Also, when she's like, you know what? After he mentioned that, may, or, or Lala mentioned that, like, maybe I was. It's just like everything that Rachel's coming up with, it's always like she just hears out there in the zeitgeist of the internet. She's like, you know what? Maybe someone, like, people. I mean, millions of people are fans of the whole Scandaval and Vanderpump world. So, like, there's a million different opinions. And Rachel is cherry picking the opinions that defend her and goes, yeah, you know what? Maybe yeah. I was the... I need someone to explain to her what figure of speech is <laughs> and quick because the way she wants... <laughs> she's like, I'm inciting violence because I'll be like, I'll light you on fire. That was wild. <laughs> um, she's like, and it's really, it's really messed up because there's people out there that I'll actually do that. So Katie can't be <laughs> going <laughs> around saying say? that. She said she would get fired. You would get fired if you had a normal I, day job. A saying normal what day said. job. If I if I said that I would light this person on fire, that I sh I would be fired. And it's insane that I'm you know out here inciting because, violence because because someone thinks you're gonna actually. Or it's that, not a that's not a figure of speech anymore. <laughs> also, you don't have a normal day job. It isn't a normal scenario. Well, so I, I know, but <laughs> also way. I don't mean actually with real fire. <laughs> do that, and I'm not suggesting someone do that. Like. Ma'am. If you think Rachel's listening to this, which I've heard she does, uh, like, is like... I, good, good. It's oh. time to learn what figure of speech means. It doesn't mean like... <laughs> literal. Literal. Well, she was like, yeah, does she know what literal means? taught me boundaries. Because no. a lot of people say literally when they don't mean literally. Girl, I welcome to earth. I'm also like, if you engage in a situation where you have to keep things secret, you see his partner and feel like you need to withhold your relationship, you know you're doing something wrong in the process. 
So it's kind of interesting to me that now that we're looking at it in hindsight, it's I was groomed, I was this. But you you went through a situation for seven months where you couldn't talk to your friends, couldn't talk to the people around you about your relationship. You're consciously making the choice to sneak around. So where's the accountability? Well, grooming imp- implies a power imbalance. We always talk about this. It's like Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky. She was a 22-year-old girl and he, he was, was a, president a, of the United a, States. a grown-ass six, 50-year-old man that was a president of the United States. They are both on the same show. They were friends. They were in the same friend group. Where where was that? You knew what you were doing and you were good with it and you wanted, you've openly admitted you were hoping they would break up and you'd end up together. So yeah, I understand in hindsight, looking back and being like, wow, I wasn't in love. I was in a really dark place. And so I got excited about this person and we were both mirroring the version of ourselves we wanted to see on each other and it felt mm-hmm. good and was exciting. That's all fine, but you were not taken advantage of. Can I agree more? So please sit down. <laughs> Have many Why seats. does Andy Cohen think Brock is the voice of reason in the remaining episodes? Did he say Brock? Or? He said Brock. He, he said, said Brock and Lala. I don't know. He said he said Allie <laughs> and know. Brock were surprising the voice of reason. He, Are we going to see something that I'm not going to? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, okay. Uh, he did. He did know. say a lot of good things about the remaining episodes. Yeah. No. It definitely like uh, gets a little more exciting. But um, I don't know. You know, everyone watches it through a different lens <laughs> so i guess that is true you know that's his take on it <laughs> well, you know the thing about the thing about sheena it's just like well obviously i don't know if, if, you, if you guys like we had charlie on the show she called brock a payroll husband. payroll husband sheena's hated us ever since and then it's not my fault that sheena is embarrassing herself this season i don't know what i don't know what to make of of her actions like when she says the well, shit about the orgies and when she the whole dancing with the stars scene I mean, we haven't even got into i mean i will say that. like i i do get down on sheeta for like you know hanging out with tom and then getting upset that people get upset about it but watching her this season and you know being very open about her relationship with brock has been you know um It's been very like I've been not enjoyed watching it, but it's like, you know, she has in the past always tried to like paint a pretty picture and tried to like make things look not, you know, like she's been very like image conscious. And when it's come to that, but like watching her and Brock work through things, it's like kind of like, okay, like that's very like vulnerable and real of you. Like I haven't seen that from her. I wish she would focus more on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think she's spread a little thin, but you know, um, but yeah, I don't know. I think she was definitely going through a lot this year. I, I just don't I don't understand the whole like even dancing with the stars that she's like you can't have it both ways. You either can support your friend or you can complain that you're not on it. You can't complain that you're not on it. Talk about all the reasons why you have the right to be a little upset and then be like, but I'm happy for you. It's just it's not going <laughs> to it's never going to land the UA you want it to land. And like she is allowed to want to go on dancing with the stars. But like <laughs> Ariana should not have to defend herself when that whole like scene where Sheena comes over then she's like yeah so I kind of heard that you're upset or whatever and then Sheena gets like mad at Lisa Vanderpump for allegedly like gossiping her about her and then Sheena basically confirms everything that Lisa allegedly said which would be like, well yeah kind of I mean I guess I was a little upset that you didn't tell me a certain way and again why does Ariana have to tell fucking anyone about this announcement and Ariana's right. I know she's publicly come out and said like, listen, like, you know, until this is done, done, like you don't fucking sit there and talk about it. There's an NDA as yeah, well. Yeah, she was. Not very, even, she, I don't even, no. you can ruin your chances of getting yeah, casted. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it was more about that. You have to make sure it's a done deal. And I don't, even if you're good friends with someone, yeah, she was very careful about telling anyone. I don't think it speaks to necessarily your friendship or where you're at or how close mm. you are. And so I think, Making it about that is unnecessary. It's like it's making it about you. You're really good friends, but like it's okay for her to be until it's publicly announced. And w- whether it was Dancing with the Stars or her being on Broadway, you know, not wanting to discuss it until it's out. Yeah. Do you? I mean, I know you can't talk about what we haven't seen this season, but to me, it's it seemed it has seemed like an attempt. You know, before the season started, there was that commentary about. Ariana potentially be painted as a vid- villain so much so that Ar- even Ariana commented somewhere I, even I wouldn't be surprised because it's like everyone knows how this shit works it's like once you're up then you're down mm. and the whole uh, thing we obviously we had the Toms on this show you know Sandoval more than anything if nothing else proved that he at the end of the day hasn't really done any work and he hasn't really 
does still to this day doesn't seem to understand why people see him for what he is. Mm. Uh, and yet this season seems to be an attempt to hard as they might try to make, to paint Ariana in a certain type of light. So far, it seems like they're failing miserably. Is that more of the same for the rest of the season or, you know, because it does seem like even publicly Lala is trying to separate herself from our, from Ariana. I mean, who do you, what do you mean when you say they, like the people on the show with that or like who, who yeah, the they, audience, the, or like, yeah, your castmates. Um, I mean, God, I don't know. I mean, I was trying to figure out what was going on in front of me the, like the entire time. I was like, hmm, how are we feeling about this? Uh, it was confusing because, again, just like a few months prior, people had very strong opinions that were like very different than like what they were saying. And you know what? Fine. Change your mind anytime you want. It's your it's your life. It's your choice. It's your whatever. Um, for me personally, I usually don't change my mind about a person or things until I see, you know, new information or like modified behavior, which there wasn't. So I was just, I was confused. And I think, you know, with, uh, Ariana, it was just sort of like, because I think they were like, well, you know, if we're going to have to like all film together, we got to like do the show. Like they were, I think that was kind of like the thing that was happening. I think there was just like frustrations that were happening. I think it was like just coming from like a frustrated place, I guess. I don't know. I Like frustrated I that they, they didn't think Aria was playing ball. And it's just like, hey, we all have to play ball. Kind of. But it's just like she, but she doesn't have to. Like, again, like ever, we, we all have agency. Like at the end of the day, I think, I think at the end of the day, like that's the reality. Yeah. That is the reality of what is happening. I mean, it's like she still like shows up to filming. Like we saw in the last episode, she went to the Belmont. Yeah, he was there. Like it's just, I think, not being forced to like have a kind of conversation on camera that it just doesn't feel like authentic but or real. I don't know. Also, like you know, when people use their own life situation and they use themselves as an example, and it was who was it? Was it Lala, Lala. or was it Sheena? Oh, was yeah. Lala? Well, like I'm not trying to make it about me when I bring up my past. Like no one does. No, no one when they say, "Yeah, yeah, me too." Here's a situation. Even when you are trying to empathize, you are. If you're going to use yourself as an example, you risk making it about you. But and that sometimes can land, and sometimes it doesn't. But not every situation is the same, you know. Mm -hmm. Like when you break up with someone and you don't have kids with them, and you're not married, you know, it's a lot easier to separate yourself and say, you know, what? I don't want to fuck with this person. You know, Nally and I, we have a kid together, and no matter what happens, we'll be in each other's lives for the next 18 years, hopefully much longer. And we love each other, and we're very happy to have the relationship we have. But that's our reality. Mm -hmm. And Lala has a kid with Randall. Yeah. And that's her reality. Ariana doesn't have a kid with Tom. She, other than now, and she's got a new house, and other than the whole weird living situation for a while, like Ariana didn't have to do a other, she didn't have to make certain concessions that Lala probably had to mm -hmm. because she had a kid with Randall. And that's not the same situation. And if Lala had to get over something, fine, but doesn't mean Ariana has to. Well, but also it took, time though still like Ariana was still fresh out of it and it, and I think just because she was having these opportunities and she met a really great guy that suddenly like she should be further along in the process but like it doesn't matter like everyone deals with things in their own time and in their own way that's but what it, that's I'm what just I saying even if say. she doesn't want to even if she never gets to the point where she's like eh yeah indifferent correct but that's what I was going to say is people obviously are watching the show and they're not putting it I think into their mind frame that that was 3 months after mm -hmm. all of that had happened, like it, w it was extremely fresh. And you're right. No matter what the timeline, she doesn't have to. But I mean, imagine having to deal with that. And it's not like they have no interaction at all ever. They certainly do. And I'd say it's pretty raw and authentic. But yeah, it's just like she doesn't owe him that. No, I don't know. Do you want to talk about Joe? Or do you want to talk about the sandwich shop? <laughs> to, 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 <laughs> my question about Joe was that Joe called you a jealous ex and implied that you were blocking her from becoming friends with people or in the group. Um, I know Kristen introduced her to the group, but I just wanted to ask you, can you break down, like, was Joe actually around you before you and Schwartz split? Like, w were you guys friends? Like, where? I mean, like, friends adjacent. Like, no, like, the only time she was around, like, Kristen, if, like, Kristen was having, like, a front like a thing at her house like joe would be there right so like that's when we would see her you know so again like i didn't tom and her like weren't like 
friend. I don't know how to explain Wait, this. You did say that she was like DMing you, asking about haircuts. Yeah, yeah so that was she weird. would she would mes- she would message me. She'd be like, I want to get more like ma- like guy haircuts in my butt, which I'm like, I've uh-huh. only seen you cut guys' hair. Like I don't. I, as far as I'm concerned. But she kept asking, texting me to like ask Tom if he wanted a haircut. I'm like, why don't you just like send Tom a DM? Like, why are you going through me? Like, and she would be like, well, I just want to be like respectful. Like, I don't want to like step on your toes. And then, and then she then moved she in with them. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then she sends me that message when we the day we announced our divorce. And then just like months later, it's like then she's like has no yeah, problem hitting him up and then asking him to stay with him. Like, seems because pretty at bold. First, at first on the show, it, <laughs> I, I, I did feel a little bad for Joe because, it you know, she was pointing out your comment. But now that you added context to it in the after show. Yeah. Well, I mean, because my, my, my comment was pretty harsh. <laughs> yeah, harsh. <laughs> but I get it. But I mean, like, I'm even watching the season and I feel a little bad for Joe because Tom is not being a very good guy. When, Which is like when Allie yeah. was like reading her horoscope, and it's just like friend vibe. She's like, oh. she's like, like you didn't know. Sometimes. Ho- I mean, I love Allie. <laughs> Allie jumping you, in, you but sometimes maybe you didn't need to read someone's horoscope to realize that like you're friends. I mean, the thing that she posted, the really long caption about him, and like the video <laughs> compilation of their friendship, and which it doesn't seem like he even acknowledged. Um, yeah, it's it's clear that like the comments she was liking on that. Of like, you guys should be together and whatever. I think it's just clear that they wanted different things I mean, and weren't aligned on what was going seems on. Seems like from a guy's point of view that Tom had sex with Joe out of convenience and selfishness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where he was bored enough to say yes to her advances, not thinking about how she might feel afterwards. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now in a classic Tom Swartz sort of way, mm-hmm. is trying to just... Everything's cool. Everything's fine. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. Yeah. And um, it's not usually that easy as adults when they start. Yeah. It's like two things. It's like, yeah, Tom, you know, being them having like whatever relations that they had and everything. And, um, you know, but I think he was uh, from what people that were around them and what they know is like, yeah, no, he was always like very upfront. Like, I just I want to be friends. I don't want a relationship. I don't want a relationship. I don't want a relationship. So it was not like he was like not being honest about that but he would also like say things to her like what we have is magic well this is so special it was a real real world romance all like that so it's like you're kind of saying two different things and your actions are also saying otherwise because you would like ask her to hang out you you obviously were intimate together so like so while it's like that's kind of like that's on him but it's also on her because like as women we also have to like believe a dude when he's (laughs) simply saying i don't want a commitment i don't want a relationship and also like Guys will just get what they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, well, the breadcrumbing of it all and letting her believe it was more than it was. I don't think he's, I don't think Tom is a malicious or evil person at all, but I think that you also, as a woman, have to come to the table and be like, okay, I'm accepting this. And for me, it seems more like she was hoping that it would develop into more. And she's like, okay, if I keep it cool right now and we're friends, but we're sleeping together and he tells me all these nice things in, in private, it'll become more and it just didn't yeah that classic case of i hope eventually he sees me the way i want him yeah. to see me and that just never happened which is such way. a bad feeling like yeah. I, yeah i feel for her on that but yeah, yeah. my final question because we talked about this on the app when we were doing vanderpump recap um was tom schwartz actually pre-med or did he take a couple science classes that were like <laughs> going towards that direction his uh like major uh is classified as like a pre mid okay. like yeah i don't don't or ask me what it is but um yeah but it's like what people i think take if they want to like be like a he took a couple science classes yeah i don't know what it's called like it's technically in a pre-med if, like you if you wanted to later on go to like a medical school but like i think it's like sports medicine kind of thing copy so. that okay no, i don't know i don't know but it's it goes into that category i don't remember what it was but technically kinesiology something like that yeah but it's like but like, i don't think it's like we're not talking like heart doctor yeah. shit but yeah you know in the <laughs> category of uh, I know you're definitely tired about answering these questions, but it sounds like you guys got your liquor license. We've had our liquor license okay. for some time. Uh, yeah. okay. That was yeah. the that was the easiest part of it, all, well, surprisingly. Was. And well, I know a lot of people made big deal made a big deal about the before and after photos uh, 
about the shop and I suspected that like that was, you know, you guys are filming a TV show. You had to film some scenes there and you probably weren't able to keep that shit up while the, all this we had to take the whole front of the building had to change. (laughs) We had, we had to, we have to get a whole new awning Uh, done. Like we also have to get permits for out there. Like we, there's a lot of like sign offs that have to be done before we can like put any of that shit back up. And like, uh, I'm just saying the, uh, the people who want to see Ariana fall are just trying to use the sandwich shop against you guys. I know that's it's, I am so, and then people are like, well, you could just give some updates. I have. You don't want to. You don't want to listen. Like, I know it's boring. It is boring. It's it's Hitler. it's yeah. It's government this and the government that like okay. or local government stuff. But like, I have given the updates. It's just it's not interesting, I guess, to y'all, and you don't want to believe it. So I don't know what to say. And like, I don't mean to like be upset and angry, but it, I'm frustrated. Not with everyone, but just with how it's all. It's a grind. It's it's a grind. It's stressful, but um, but those are the updates. Okay. But we're opening soon. So all right. the valley. We loved it. Surprisingly, yeah. I loved it. It's kind of what Vanderpump yeah, almost should it. have become on its own. Well, that's what we would we were always hoping to like transition into like, like in adulthood. life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but But now, and now before <laughs> the season even started, we have two of the pre-existing couples of episode 1. One separated, Jackson and Brittany. Mm-hmm. Brittany wants to talk about it with anyone who asks. Jax keeps pretending he's like it's some sort of private information, which is hilarious. <laughs> Uh, and then you have the other couple. <laughs> What's the other? What, who, what are uh, the cast Jesse, people? Jesse and Michelle. Yeah. Jesse and Michelle. They are. They've already filed for divorce. All I know is that they're. Su- they All I know is they're the one couple that like wanted to talk shit about the Valley. It is kind of fun to watch the Valley because well, Sierra is uh, uh, in the Valley. Nally and I are in the Valley. Uh, you're in the valley. We're all valley. You're in the we're valley. All in the valley. So <laughs> it's like okay, like a little a little TV show about like my neighborhood. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fun. It yeah. is weird seeing all like the restaurants and places and being like, wait. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Uh, it's, it's great. Uh, what a way to launch your single, n- like new new coming out party, single career. Because that's kind of what like these couples, they announced their divorce p- prior to this episode one. So now what we're watching is like. But I, I do have to wonder, I'm like, so now what is it about? <laughs> like, to, we're, like, it's supposed well, to be about, like we're watching the follow. Well, no, but moving forward, like what, it, what yeah. becomes of this show? Because it's about like the whole intro is like kids and couples. And now it's like, well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now it's Vanderpump Rules where we're at. Just mess. <laughs> I mean, what did they expect from Jax? Chaos. Who, by the way, like, yeah, also, he talks shit about you too. I fucking hate it. <laughs> Jax Taylor I is a I terrible have, human I being. I haven't seen him. Well, we, I, you'll see coming up. Did you have to film with him? Yeah. yeah. But that was the first time I'd seen him in literal years. So I'm like, your disdain for me is creepy kind of like his the stuff with Kristen anyway but speaking of Kristen mm. uh there she's trying for a baby with oh. her partner that lives in Colorado full time that was fucking wild Jax Taylor season one not having been on TV and I don't know how long and he's talking about his growth and his change and he's no longer the person we got to learn who he was in Vanderpump and somehow while Scandal was going on Jax Taylor wanted us to believe that he was somehow some some reformed piece of Family shit man. and he comes on episode one to tell Kristen that she's not ready to have kids are you fucking kidding me he acts like, like in all- what world is it your place to like walk through where whether Kristen Doty is ready to like have a child. Genuinely. He acts all precious about the nuclear family now too, which is super weird. And I thought his comments to Luke were so out of pocket and being like, well, it's out of wedlock, which also is at 1950. <laughs> Why the, who the fuck says wedlock? But like, it's also not your business. A lot of people choose not to get married and have partnerships and have kids. Yep. Like it's not uncommon these days. So like, why does that matter? Well, he contradicts everything he says. The same way it's like, I was like, calm down. I stay at home. And then he makes up shit as he goes. He gets in the car and he's like, I want to stay all night drinking shots with shorts. It's like, so which one is it, dude? Yeah, there's that one scene. Someone's like shots and Jax goes, yes. Like it was like, holy shit, calm down. Jesus yeah. Christ, it's not um, like in high school. Well, no, he said he's like very much on the family man, doesn't go out, do all of that. And then the second that the, that he announced the separation or the, the separation was announced, it's like club, another club, out. <laughs> kids kids with Britney going to dinner and he's in Montreal partying. So it's like, what is it, Sir Jax? Yeah. What is it? He doesn't know, so <laughs> don't ask him. Like who, and who is the couple that's getting divorced? What do we know about them? Jesse do you know and them? Michelle. Have you met them? Yeah. I mean, more. I don't know them like super well, but I've, I've spent some time with them and I was not a fan of him. Michelle seems lovely. She's, I, she's um the sweetest. And I like, I of course, like never said anything, but I'm, I would make comments with 
some of the other gals that'd be <laughs> in our friend group and we were like he's kind of a pig awful and i would hear and they have they had this boys group chat oh. and he would say really whack stuff like, in this group i i'm uh, not gonna repeat it because it's about his wife or just no like, um extracurriculars um, just a tease the uh, i think it's also some of that's going to come out this season from what i've heard like rare extremely problematic yeah. okay yeah i'd say problematic but are we like sexist racist like which one both? It's an ist. <laughs> it's an ist. Yeah. So yeah, I've I've spent, which is not a ton, but more time with Michelle, and she is the sweetest person. Yeah. They have a beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. I think she's a wonderful mother. I'm and very just, happy for her. Yeah, I am too. I will say, watching this, it's like I feel like Kristen really has matured over the years. We are going back and watching old episodes of Vanderpump, yeah. and as a fan, I, I selfishly and I apologize to Kristen. I I want crazy Kristen back on my <laughs> TV screen because she was awesome <laughs> as a TV character. And, Truly. and I'm really curious like if she's going to bless us with just a hint of that or is it just going to be, again, because like while Jax is questioning her right to be a mother, she was rather poised. If she's in and, the right state of mind, like I would have <laughs> lost my shit if, some, if Jax of all people is questioning if yeah. I'm ready based on my state of mind. Yeah. Right. And she was... Level headed conviction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was convicted. Really like, like, it, was a, it was a little sad. Yeah. I wanted to see. But I feel like a crazy Kristen thing is kind of like a similar to like a tequila Katie thing. It's like, are we crazy and is it tequila Katie or are we just over it? Yeah, no. <laughs> are no, we just I'm, been pushed to the edge? I'm glad Kristen has demonstrated growth. I'm just saying as a fan, <laughs> I just selfishly. I, well, I'm uh, just saying, though, I'm saying. Um, from like the you know teasers and everything like that like it looks like she does kind of pop off a bit but like I'm you know Chris, crazy Kristen is it really seemed like Jax the whole episode was trying like when you when you were watching it I feel like he was like I'm back on TV like him running around the party pantsing people like is that to me that was like Jax being like I'm back I'm back on TV and like, I'm just gonna at, act like an I'm asshole be wild and crazy yeah <laughs> and, like, so much fun. I'm a star you know like <laughs> Yeah, that was super weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, he is uh he's a social piece of shit. <laughs> what? What? Um, don't, don't hold back. No, I'm just I'm not. I'm just watching your face, and it's funny. Like, yeah, it's that's oh, true. What does my face do? Sometimes I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right. What? What? The thing I forgot to talk about uh, in the valley. Also, everyone, welcome to the show, Leia. Time warp. There she, she is. Replaced, we replaced Justin. Justin was fired in yeah. between. Not so sweet boy. Oh. Yeah. Anyways, welcome, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, it's so nighttime. Weird. Anyways, we did a time lapse. But before we get to the Bachelor, uh, I know we have to wrap up on the Valley. But the new couple, and that's the the couple who's I keep forgetting their names. They're new. The ones getting divorced already. Jesse. Jesse. Michelle. Okay. Michelle, yeah. Jesse's the guy, or Michelle's the guy. Jesse's the guy. Who do you think? <laughs> what is what are they French? Yes, Michelle is the girl. <laughs> what are you talking about? Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. Is it that crazy of a question? You, no, yes. kind of. Yeah. Yes. Fine. A little bit. Fine. Yeah, anyway, Jessie, so that couple. Michelle, yeah. Jesse and Michelle. Jesse. Um, the one who hates being a father. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The one who wants to drink champagne who, at nine AM. Who wants to go on the it's a serious question, Katie. Yes. Who you are a a veteran. You are an iconic reality TV character. You've been on the show. For how long have you been a Vanderpump? Um, uh, Emmy nominated Vanderpump Rules cast member. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, like, <laughs> for 11 period. seasons running. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Check off those boxes. Let's, yes. Let's just um, uh, <laughs> fit it all get it there. right. <laughs> but like for the people, yeah. I know the Jags Taylors of them all. Like, yeah. I, I can't imagine some middle aged guy be like, you know what? I'm going to go on the show and like, I'll be the deadbeat dad. And look terrible. Uh, yeah. I, like, I I, is that is that just. Can oh. you explain it? Because if, I, I only come from Bachelor World, and Bachelor World, the worst you can look is like not there for the right reasons. But like you're just. Did he go on the show signing up for that role? Is is that what you're asking? Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's his first episode. He's like, yeah, I hate, I, I'm, I'm a terrible fucking father. I like, yeah, we're, you know, my wife, my wife, she's a great mother, and like when it comes to me being a dad, yeah. He also made that comment to Lala about yeah. being her mistress. In yeah, front that he of also his... came off as a little creepy. That's him. <laughs> okay. So you guys film so much and like on The Bachelor, at the end of the day, yeah, they pick and choose spots, but like eventually you'll show your true colors. It's a little hard to, I think, 
hide who you really are. I mean, people will try to like present themselves in a way, but sure. I think I think that's it comes across as phony. Yeah. So eventually, it's easier just to be honest about who you I are. Yes. Yeah, and I think some people are a little, like a little too honest about who they are. Case in point. Yeah. yeah. I guess, I, mean, I guess. I mean, I'm interested. I don't know why. I, I can't mean, imagine. It seemed like a natural off the cuff comment when when Michelle was saying, do you want to help with our daughter? I can't remember specifically what he said. And he was like, no. Yeah, yeah just no. Away. And I, I think that. maybe that was like him trying to be tongue in cheek or whatever. But it just it's like Boeing. It didn't and land. I'm only, you know I'm, what I mean? I'm only <laughs> seven <laughs> weeks in. Maybe maybe the, the charm will rub off. But like we just got done viewing the bachelor finale and like it was a no-brainer for me to first before we got back up here started re-recording which i was excited to get into to like go help natalie take river back in the car so they could go home that's just like something you do and like he's just gone no i'm gonna go in the show i'm gonna like try to be funny and just be the guy who's like no i don't like being well, dad. i'm wondering if he truly just thought it was gonna be you know funny like he's just trying to be haha but like just like I, I know, never this, joke, I would never joke. About this that. is a small thing, and not to be nitpicky, but like even the ice cream thing, where he was like got her all the ice cream, and then was just like, and also just like then let her go into the wild, and was like, good luck. She's like walking around, and Michelle was like, okay, we need to have lunch, not just the ice cream, and it was just like, it's certainly a choice. I'm just saying, it's a creative choice. I don't think I would make to go. She's on She's a show. single parent, is what yeah. it looks like. She's a yeah. single parent with an adult child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 a small child, the mother well. of two. You know, literally. Yeah. Oh, tough episode for him. I also think he came on right. He's friend of Jack's. I think there's some like back history that like they've known each other from back in the day where I'm also like, that's not the most promising. Yeah, that's reference. not. Yeah. yeah when everyone comes along, they're like, yeah, I knew Jax back in the day. We were roommates modeling together. It's like, oh. yeah, is, that, that was, is that like the main Immediately character? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something I forgot to bring up uh, when we were talking Vanderpump, my favorite part of last episode. When was Tom was, I felt like it was when Tom was on this episode trying to convince me I was late when he was talking about Ariana's alleged like five night rager. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I knew Dude. he, I knew he was totally full of shit and lying when he was like, yeah. And then like, I had to get up for work. <laughs> It's like I like work the next what? day. Like where? What? <laughs> what job? Where? And when? I don't know. Yeah, trying to say that she was. Uh, it was. I mean, I'm like sure he, he does some work. I'm, in the morning. I'm, I'm, he's he's uh... not, a, not a nine to five guy. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wake up for work. He's <laughs> making that up. Yeah, no, I Anyways. don't think. So. Unless I, I'm, am I wrong? Did Ariana have a five night rager? And, no, no, okay. no. Okay, I, just, I just want to make sure. I don't want to. No, she did not. No, I, I mean, if if there was nights that we were ever there, I remember there was nights that we were like up kind of late playing music, but he wasn't home, okay. so he doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, so he can't complain. That's what I assumed, but <laughs> I had I had yeah. to get up for work. Uh, he just says <laughs> shit that just he thinks sounds believable. I know, I know. Well, I'm especially considering that. There was just so many nights where he was doing that. Where <laughs> she's like PTSD because she'd be like in bed, like lying there, and she would hear the JBL speaker turn on and it makes this noise where it turns on. It goes. Bloop. She's like, oh my god. All right, maybe this story is too close to home, yeah. but you made me want to like you reminded me of the first time I went to Tom Sandoval's mm -hmm. house when I was on special forces with him. He had you know we so like last month. <laughs> that was like three months ago. It's like three months ago. Uh, it was you know when it was. It was your ex's birthday. So October, so, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I Swartz was there. It was his, he, he, it was his birthday. He was celebrating his birthday at the viewing party, and mm -hmm. he was giving me the tour of the backyard, and he pointed to the pool, and <laughs> he, he goes, he pointed to the hot tub. He's like, and he sincerely was like, yeah, man, that thing's just like a time vortex. Like once you get in, you're there all night. And I'm thinking it's just a hot tub, <laughs> like. Well, why are you in there all night? But he was so passionate about the persuasion that apparently that hot tub had over him and Tom no, Sandoval. No, it's a persuasion that Tom Sandoval has over him. We uh, see it all. Like, But on this episode, he did bow out at that party. Yeah, if Tom Schwartz is leaving your party because it's weirding him out, you know that says that? a lot. <laughs> Something's gone Tom, terribly Tom wrong. Schwartz has never left a party at that house early. You don't think that, that that's not a sign of growth, but perchance? Per se, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know what it is the sign of, but like it's kind of said, I was like, yo, that, that's it's a it's sign just... the wheels have fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 Tom, I don't know what it, he he did. Not, and I remember him saying, telling me like at some point, maybe the day after something, he's like, I felt really uncomfortable. And seeing it, I was like, I would have, like, that, I, I that was feel, the most uncomfortable thing I've ever seen in my life. I feel like getting to know him a little bit, I don't know, maybe you have a different, you definitely know more than I do. But I feel like, like I mean, we all, Tom Schwartz's loyalty to Sandoval is, is well documented. 
um, unwavering, yeah. unwavering, and yeah, yeah. But it's like it seems like now, it's like he can you can see him see it. Like even the after shows where Tom's doing his <laughs> bullshit, and his it's just God face. bless Swartz for it's like he won't give up on him. But it, it's it's like he sees what he's up against. I see him disassociating. He's like, uh. yeah. <laughs> Like, anyway. He's like he's he used to like try to help him in some ways. Now he's just he's like I'm just gonna. Yeah. It was like on this couch where it was like trying to explain what Tom Sandoval meant, and it was like you yeah. don't need to be his interpreter or translator. Yeah, math equations. And now it's the after show where he's just like sitting there like, please stop talking. Please. No, stop he's talking. he's literally just like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of great. Anyway, gets his phone out. Uh, <laughs> before we get to the Bachelor, uh, I want to know. While we were watching the Bachelor, they showed a preview for Lisa Vanderpump's new show on Hulu, uh, Vanderpump Villa. <laughs> and I am dying to know your opinion. I was on my phone. I told you I was I on know. my phone. Do you want to play it? Do you need the? I, <laughs> Just, okay, I, okay I, you I know that up, she's dropping a I show that up, seems to be like a new Vanderpump. Yeah, except for it's people that are like they're living in a in a villa, and they're. I didn't see any guests. Are they, are they supposed to be helping? I don't know. It's, like, tend, tend to guess? I didn't, they don't, it doesn't. Did, is this a Lisa Vanderpump <laughs> villa? Or <laughs> is, is this like a, a French house they rented? It's formatted in the style of Below Deck. Yeah. So so they're, they're like they're gonna the const- staff. Every episode will be like Why? a new group of people staying there. Why right? do you think it's on Hulu and not Bravo? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or Peacock. Or Peacock. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I don't know either. Maybe she's like, trying to branch out, babes. I was going to say, I feel like Lisa, didn't she have a show where she invited people over to, for dinner and stuff? That wasn't on Peacock or Bravo. It was on E. So yeah. it was like, so she's just. This, it, Bravo adjacent. It's, yeah, it's. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. NBC Pe- Universal. That would also be Peacock. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's a, that is a good question. I don't know if like, uh, I don't, I don't know how that happened. What do you think about it? <laughs> I don't, you I mean. T- you seem to have an opinion. So I'll tune in. I'm, I'm not. No, I don't. You, she's an insider. I'm not in the, It's Hulu. You think I'm an insider? First of all, I more than I am. I didn't even know that it was happening until she was like going to go do it. And yeah. I, I had such minimal information. I, I'm curious. I, I don't. I don't. I'm learning about it with the rest of the world. <laughs> you guys, you don't have to be defensive. Truly, what I found out about, it, I was like, can I come to France? Can I come? Uh, hang I was going to ask, is there going to be I, crossover? I, I, I don't know. I know, I know that they were looking for people for like bachelorette parties, all of that stuff, because my friend sent it to me and was like, should we go to the French villa, like fake a marriage and just go? And I was like, maybe, I, but I'm, no. I'm willing to give it a shot. It really just depends on who, how the casting is. I and... think they're just trying to re-kickstart the magic that happened like season one of Vanderpump. Yeah. Do you know so. how many times that's been tried? Tried, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can. I mean, I don't you guys, think, I mean, you we've, guys I think went we've, hard to the paint. We've we've said a million times, like why we think our show worked and works so well, and it's not something you can yeah. recreate. recreate. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't mean it can't be entertaining or it can't be a great show. It's just not going to be like the same kind of we'll show. See. You know, I mean, I think they, it's something they try to do with Southern Hospitality, but I'm enjoying that show. I think it's a great show. It's just not the same same show. It's just, it's just a show about a staff that works at a good. The club and you know Charleston and stuff like that. It's entertaining. It's like it's the same kind of like you know drama of people that work in hospitality and that kind of things. But it's not the same same thing. Same, yeah. But um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. Of course, I'm curious. Of course, I want to watch it. But I, I don't know. I don't have the insight. Right, Sorry, right. I can't one, help you out there. Totally okay. It's totally okay. <laughs> like I know nothing about the casting. I know nothing about the people. I know nothing about like filming and all that. Okay. So. All right. All right. Now I feel like I'm Jesse Palmer because I'm like now before we get to the Bachelor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we were also watching The Bachelor. Another commercial that we saw was the uh, movie for uh, the stuntman. Was it? Was it the stuntman? The security. No, it's with uh, Fall Guy. Ryan Gosling. Ryan the Fall and, Guy. And Emily. It's about a stuntman. Ryan Gosling and, and, and Emily Blunt. Two very charismatic characters, and I couldn't help like see their charisma like pop off the screen watching it. And it's just like, how does it? How do you? How, how do you be, stay? How do you marry to an actor? <laughs> You be another actor. Yeah, you gotta be very. Secure. You gotta level the playing you, field. Is that how you do it? If you're John Krasinski and uh, who? Who's like you gotta be very secure. Eva Mendes. Eva Mendes. Yeah. Eva Mendes. Yeah. I don't know. I think that Eva Mendes wakes up in the morning and looks in the mirror and is like, "Yeah, yeah." I don't know that she's even Emily Blunt stunning. And yeah, they're I mean, waking up. It's but... not a matter of hotness. It's just more like, damn, you guys like, you guys are very charismatic together. Yeah, but the thing is, I I don't think it's. It's what you think. I don't think it's as sexy as you know. think it is. Well, yeah. Then they say like Ryan Gosling and um, what's her name, Kate McAdams. 
did not Rachel. like each other. Kate Rachel. McAdams. Rachel McAdams. Rachel. They Rachel. dated they for did. several years. <laughs> they were like a couple After for a long time. Isn't the rumor like on set they weren't fans of each other? No, they I'm no. Crazy. That's that's yeah. a Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, I think you're thinking of Dirty Dancing. No, I, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, Jennifer they, Gray and Patrick I, Swayze I did not saw, get along. Maybe it was really? maybe it was the internet giving me fake news, but I definitely <laughs> saw somewhere <laughs> that they did not. But I fuck me. No, they, yeah, they did dated. It. They did an interview with Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet, and they asked questions about like their chemistry, and they were just like, "No, we are just friends." Did they have chemistry in Dune? Huh. Yeah. I, huh. Yeah. They're, well, just phenomenal <laughs> actors, I guess. Anyway, yeah, great no, but it's the yeah, they got, it's uh, looks like a good movie. It's almost like oh. they should get paid for it. Sure, but like that chemistry, sometimes yeah. like that chemistry is just like natural, you know. Well, sometimes like you Joey can, and Chel- sometimes Kelsey. Sometimes you can, you Fuck. can, oh like God. Joey and Kelsey. You can fake it. You find something you really like about the person you love about the person, and then you use okay. that to like, you know, it's not fake acting. it, but like right. you create right. chemistry out of that. It's right. just, it's not the same kind of chemistry you have like with your per- partner person. I mean, very Brad and Angelina, I mean, he was married to Jen Aniston and then that happened. Obviously, yeah, well, different that They were so good at acting, they actually fell they, in love. They literally were yeah. so, the chemistry was so crazy. <laughs> all right, well, it's time to get to the moment you've all been waiting for, the big Bachelor finale. All right, it's Bachelor time. Brooklyn! Oh, baby, talk, talk, talk to about Brooklyn. The most luxurious, the most buttery soft cooling sensation iconic bedding towels everything you could ever want and more to feel relaxed and comfortable yeah, oh yeah. the best sheets we've slept on that's it's the only sheets that i have i've put so many friends and family members onto them we love the deluxe satin collection mm. that's our favorite plus they got some wonderful loungewear some comfortable clothing some great towels robes they also have satin pillowcases which are really great for your hair and skin Allie, you know what i'm talking about i not only have a brooklyn and satin pillowcase but i also have an eye mask cuz i'm yes. very sensitive to light Their eye so masks i'm like my incredible. eyelashes are good my hair is good my skin is good we're good we're good we're good the brooklyn and eye masks are Chef's kiss. Let Brooklyn and transform your bedroom into the sleep sanctuary you've always wanted. From luxurious Lux Satine, hello, that's ours, to crisp classic Percale, there's a Brooklyn and sheet weave for every type sleeper. Plus, Brooklyn and award winning sheets are made with long staple cotton, resulting in high quality night of rest. So embrace this spring refresh with Brooklyn and Home Essentials. Visit in store or online at brooklinen.com. That's B R O O K L I N E N dot com. And use code V I A L L for $20 off orders $100 or more. That's B R O O K L I N E N dot C O M. Use promo code V I A L L for $20 off. Brooklinen.com. Zoa, you've got to check out Zoa, Dwayne the Rock. Johnson's Energy Drink. Zoa just launched a brand new campaign. It's all about the BDE. You know what I'm talking about. Big Dwayne Energy. They've got a really awesome new commercial that you can check out at Zoa's Instagram or YouTube channels. Zoa Energy is a better for you energy drink with great taste, electrolytes, B and C vitamins, and zero sugar. It's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash. When you drink Zoa Energy drinks, it gives you the big Dwayne energy, which gives you the swag, confidence, and energy to help you conquer your day. Here at the Biofiles, my team has loved Zoa to give them the extra boost to get through their days with ingredients that enhance energy levels. Zoa Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation. They've got eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape, which happens to be one of my team's favorites, along with their delicious Cherry Limeade. Get some big Dwayne energy and order Zoa Energy today, available online and at stores near you. Find out where you can find it at zoaenergy.com and find retailers like Amazon, 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. All right, Joey and Kelsey fall in love. They are together. Is it time for shot o'clock? Shot o'clock. Oh my <laughs> goodness. What was that? That was. Uh, no, I know. Oh, yeah, I, know I know. I know it was Jen's yeah, thing, yeah. but why did she lead with that? I don't know. Anyways, don't obviously, know. like uh, Joey and Kelsey are together. Like, what did we. Like, great, very solid finale. Like, I love them together. I think they're so the adorable. Board, just yeah. good, good vibes. Like, the Daisy exit was. Nice. I mean, I got emotional. Like, in women empowerment. Was it different than anything you've ever seen before on The Bachelor? It's Shocking. never been done. But <laughs> I don't think Daisy's the first one who wished they could have totally, done it. Totally, sure. You know? Um, most people aren't as delusional as I was when I was in that position. I was, like, full steam ahead. I'm like, there were, there were a couple moments where, I, like, I, 
I was like, yeah, it's definitely not me. But I would snap right back in. I'm like, no, you're fucking in this shit. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of people before that, like, other, I think a lot of, I think like Raven from my season, I think she fucking knew. I was very careful about what I didn't say and what I said. I really didn't want to lead people on. Mm-hmm. And Raven's a very intelligent, you know, person. I think, I think Rachel knew. I think they all knew. Well, I could uh, say that Joey didn't, wasn't as subtle. I'll yeah. say that much. It was pretty he, obvious. I, I think, I think they almost mm-hmm. had to do what they did because what was Joey's line? Uh, I hope you fall like in love. I hope you find love, even if it's not with me. me. <laughs> or, even if or, or with me, or in, or just or so, in general, or with someone else, <laughs> or with someone else, or something. Like once Joey said that to Daisy, that was it. Like they had, like they were like, you just told, you just, you just told her you're not gonna pick her, dude. Yeah. She's smart. The joy literally left Daisy's yeah. face, body. She like was like, okay, I'll kiss you. And but... they couldn't edit it out. They had to. They and they did. I'm glad they did what they did because they could have edited that part out. They could have edited that part out and had Daisy did what she did and that would have almost made her seem like you're you're quitting. How do you really know? Well, her entire demeanor changed. Mm-hmm. Like she was like <laughs> literally she turned into a, like a sad little puppy. Like just it would have been hard to explain. Or just in general. <laughs> well, I don't know. Just in general. Like, or just in general. Imagine I, how many women are on that show. And I guess when it's also The Bachelorette, like men who have anxious attachment styles when all you're doing is seeking validation. So she kept saying, like, I'm not getting the validation here. I'm not getting the validation. Because it seems like he was also careful to not, I mean, he told her without telling her. We should get t-shirts that say, <laughs> just in ge- or, or just in general. Uh, yeah, I, just, I, I could not do that show. Nope. Never. <laughs> I could no. not do that. Because I would, I would be like, um, I, I need clarity. I need you to tell me exactly <laughs> Where your head's at. Right. Competing How for a man like? in this economy? Ooh. No, absolutely Ew. not. <laughs> Never oh. me. I'm like, I will. I like to be pursued. So you're gonna have to no. Come I was like, me. I'm going to Kelsey's room. I'm going to Joey's room, being like, "Hey, is it me? No, because I'm feeling like no. <laughs> Do you love me? Are <laughs> yeah. you choosing me? If not, I'm leaving. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's not fr- how this works, Katie. I'm like, I don't care. The friend thing <laughs> was like, kind of it. Did it was. Did it play out for you? Sure. I mean, whatever. Did you like it? I didn't care. Oh, I didn't really have well, a strong opinion. I mean, they kind of made a big deal about the two of them being in the car together for it to kind of. That was a nice. That was a nice moment. It was a nice for sure. Touch. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't. Well, I, when I say I don't care, I I feel like other people have stronger opinions about the moment. Like, I, I, I think you suggested that almost like Kelsey was being a girl's girl in that moment because you know at that moment she's like, okay, well, I, it is me, obviously, because this girl. Clearly Kelsey was knows. wearing white. <laughs> yeah, she was wearing white. You know, I think she's she like, was, I know it's she you. Could, she's like, I know I'm she's wearing, wearing white. Wang. She she's walked like, out. I got all the validation I needed, and and Daisy's like, I got zero, and she's like, yes. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, let me cuddle you. You know, she was like, let me just like be here for you in this moment. Let's go together. Like, so she Kelsey was, was a better friend. No yeah. one was being a better friend. I think she just like kind of like put her like stuff aside for a moment just to be like an emotional support for Daisy. Yeah. That was being a friend, but like not that Daisy wasn't she had to just be in her emotions and she tried to like hold it together and do the the, the graceful exit thing. well also i that that has always confused me because friend yes i guess friendships form you're in a house together but you are all competition so yeah. is it like is that a scenario in which that would even be required yeah you don't want to be a dick but it gets very it gets very weird towards the end it gets very <laughs> personal in most cases like the reason they separate it is because like yeah even if you like the person you're just like oh this is like too fucking weird I mean, again, Joey was just like, and or or in general, and in that moment, they were like, "Oh, <sighs> well, I felt she, bad for Kelsey." She knows, she knows, she's not going to be picked. So, like, how else can we make this work? Had had they cut that out and like aired it, where Daisy's just like moping around, like, "Yeah, he's definitely not going to pick me," because she fucking knew. How like, did you feel bad for Kelsey? I feel bad for Kelsey because I feel like her moment of getting to go up there and be proposed to and not know beforehand was taken from her. Mm. I I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I just think in that having been in that position, you're you're not you don't care about anyone ruining the surprise. Like if any moment, if you were to be the one or not be the one, like a heads up is fully appreciated. You right. know, like and I don't think Joey knew though because he tried to do the fake out. Joey definitely knew. He tried to do the fake out though, where he we'll was like. Him. You know, but and then he like went with it. But Kelsey already knew that she was going to be the choice. Oh, I'm sorry. You knew. OK, I get what you're saying. I yeah. thought you said that Joey didn't know he was going to pick. No, no, okay, no. I'm sorry. saying I don't think he knew that they had that moment. He before. might not have known for sure. Yeah. He might not have known. Yeah. He almost certainly didn't unless someone told him. 
Well, when he like, after Daisy walked away, when he kind of like walked off and was like talking to producers, you don't think someone was like, by the way, they came together. I don't <laughs> know. Definitely, definitely. tried to do the thing. You don't think so? Well, first of all, only if they wanted him to know. Like okay. all, that would have happened without him knowing. And like, there are a lot of things that the lead doesn't get to know. Okay. If they want the lead to know, they'll tell them, but only if they want them to know. Well, what so. if he's like, how do, like she do? I mean, I don't know. Afterwards, they they would yeah. be like, oh, she's fine. They'll give you the whole, like, she'll be sad, but she's, you know, the bachelor or bachelorette will often check in after they send people home late in the, the journey. And you're like, yeah, how's, uh, how's so-and-so? Because you feel, you're, you're like, like you, get to, you get to know, you get to know, I just don't want to <laughs> say names from my season, you know, like, but yeah, like in Joey's case, he might be like, you know, how's Rachel? How's Rachel doing? I have a question. Is it true when you're doing like the, the, the rose ceremonies, like when there's, 15 of them that they're telling you the names no there's no earpiece you you you, you have to remember in, their names they give you four names or you know it's like it's kind of a game of guessing that usually it's four they'll give you four names and first of all when when the women are there or the guys are there it's a quiet room and you know unless you've listened to the show before you're like some super fan you have no fucking clue what i to can't expect. remember she, one person's name when they've told on, it to me 10 on, seconds before so t- i know <laughs> then this is what it would happen to you Why so four? there's a whole so like they so basically they give you four names and they walk you out and they say just you know do your thing if at any moment you forget if you forget if the first, oh, just okay. walk on back because <laughs> okay. the people there <laughs> they'll just think like there's more suspense or you're still making a decision. They have no, like us guys who are sitting there walk in and out <laughs> five times. You're like, holy fucking shit. Will she make up her mind? You don't fucking know. So they give you four names and you say four names, you walk off, you say four names, you walk off. The first time you're there, you're like, what the fuck is going well, on? Now, you know. I'm just glad. I'm, now just, they know. I'm just glad you didn't have a Chelsea and a Kelsey on your season because that would have been a mess. Uh, <laughs> well, now well everybody... Jesse Palmer classically th- now hosts the show. I think classically like said the wrong name he and did. had to be like no, no sorry she walked up Ooh. to get the rose and he's like oh it's like, stop not you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would just leave to bring out another rose <laughs> well but now they the, i just wondered that i'm just like he just remembers yeah. all these names so yeah well luckily there's a lot of names they're like matt p matt s <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, it's, a, just it's not that guess. hard yeah and again if you forget you just walk off and everyone's like that much more like uh, intense. Okay, I like, it. Just, like But now everybody shit. knows if they if they if you're ever on it and he's walking away, it's because uh, he doesn't remember. Yeah, you. yeah. Now you know. <laughs> if he comes, yes, if he comes back you know. and he calls your name next, it's because he couldn't remember it. So. You're not a front runner. <laughs> uh, Jen is a new bachelorette. Wow, shocking! Yay! Very shocking. I everyone was shocked that it wasn't Daisy after this episode. Because... Um, well, first of all, obviously, you know, first Asian bachelorette. That's amazing. Awesome. Love the representation. Mm-hmm. Sad that it took this long. Elephant in the room, everyone's super disappointed. It's not Maria mostly. I think there was a lot of Daisy fanfare after her like strong ending because like she was the last her- person to get broken up with. So there's always going to be that buzz around her name. But where I feel bad for Jen and for all, I think there's a lot of like positive sentiment for Jen because like she seems like a wonderful person. We just don't know anything about her. And that's what's a bummer is because like there's 31, like there was 30 women, right? 32. 32. Okay. So the how ma- however many contestants plus the lead, there are that many like stories that they have an option to tell. Like mm-hmm. they always focus on the lead and then they have like what, three or four other stories to tell because there's limited time. Mm-hmm. So they chose to focus on Maria. They chose to focus on Daisy. Obviously, Kelsey, she ends up. It's like they didn't do jen any favors by not focusing on their story now i was told by someone who was told that as a week ago maria was the bachelorette now this person could have been definitely wrong they clearly were but i i i thought it was out like two hours before we're recording this i called a friend and they were like yeah so it's it's not her it's jen and i was i was uh surprised but i guess uh they I heard that they Maria was the choice and that they couldn't make it work uh, for reasons that I, uh, un- are unclear. But I could be wrong. I'm sure Maria will get asked about the process. I mean, Daisy, another, she came out and said she's not ready to date. But the big question is, is that Daisy, you know, being gracious and being a good sport and like everyone showing support for Jen? Or does, did da- was Daisy asked? Did she turn it down because she is, in fact, not ready? I'd be curious to know. Call me, Daisy. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Do we have any speculation in the room? I, no, I feel like it feels genuine. I don't know. Maybe she's just really not. I mean, she seemed pretty, not traumatized, but like pretty, I don't know. Shaken up. The, intens- yeah. the intensity of reality television, it wouldn't surprise me if yeah. she genuinely just needed to take a beat, even if it wasn't like 
maybe for the show's sake, she's like, oh, I'm not ready to date. Maybe in general, that was a really big experience and she needs a breather. So that one's I think me. she had a strong enough, um, which was a very popular season, mm -hmm. no doubt. She mm -hmm. was a star in this popular season. If they needed to go back to Daisy, they definitely could. Like if in a year from now, they have another Bachelor season where for whatever reason, like, you know what this season, like, you know what's a season that's really underappreciated? Peter Weber's season. Did you watch that season? I did. That, that was fucking Pilot crazy. Pete? Yeah. yeah Pilot that was an amazing season. I don't remember. Here's what was so amazing. You just, you just have to remember the ending that with Barb, his mom, yeah. and yeah. just the oh fight that his mom had with Maddie Pruitt. What people don't realize that Peter was so chaotic and so messy. Now, keep in mind, after that messy fucking finale, Peter Weber, God bless him, and I love him as a person. He's a great guy. I uh, started dating Kelly Flanagan, and then he broke up and then got back together. But before he started dating Kelly Flanagan, he got engaged to Hannah Ann, star, love her. She's Baker on the internet. She's yeah. crushing life. Yeah. Happily engaged. Uh, you had Victoria Victoria Fuller, friend of show, who famously didn't even show up for a home for her hometown. Right before her hometown, yeah, she just oh, yeah. picked a fight with Peter and said, <laughs> "Fuck this, I'm not even going." I Left forgot. her parents I love sitting her. in the fucking house, right? Um, <laughs> what? With and him? You had, you had all these with him. No, no, the, no, no. Parents with the she's walking with Peter. I don't, I don't know what the fuck. They were happened. like on her doorstep, and I don't know. Like <laughs> Victoria Fuller got activated, and she said, "Fuck this!" Picked a fight with Peter. Said, "I'm out." They made up the next day. It was awesome. It was oh. iconic. I think as great as she is, I think she was a little messy for maybe the Bachelorette, you know, whatever. But like they had no, so he couldn't. You couldn't pick Hannah Ann because he was like just. He, you get it, you went into the finale. It was just like uh, he's engaged, but five minutes later they broke up. And then he and was he with Maddie. And he was with Maddie. So uh, he 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 all these great options of bat shreds were like on pause because Peter was so fucking messy on his season. He was hopping that from you're going into the finale being like, who the fuck is Peter Weber with? And he was maybe with like half his cast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a an exaggeration, that's but not like, really. But that's 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 Kinda. why you didn't have anyone from that season. Like my energy. Who ended up being the Bachelorette? Did they who use someone up, from a previous who season? Who ended up being the Bachelorette? It was like 2020. 19. Nick, I know it's your job to be. You're so knowledgeable about this. Were you a fan of The Bachelor? You covered before, the show. I, yeah, oh, no, I've I know. I'd never before, seen it. Had you ever seen it before I you wanted? Before That's I got like, casted, oh I, I, I bought Desiree's season, which was The Bachelor's, before I went on. And I watched that. And then I watched the current season, which was Juan Pablo's season mm. at the time. And I watched all, so I definitely did my homework. Prior to that, I had friends who'd watched it. I had seen episodes of Sean Lowe. I like, I knew who Emily Maynard was, you know, like mm -hmm. I was familiar with it, but I wasn't a fan. Was it Claire? <gasps> yeah, yeah, they, they made it oh, Claire. And then Claire, oh my yeah, God. they, they that called. Was, and that was the worst. And then, you know, that worst. happened. And then mess. that's led in Tasha. <laughs> yeah. Was, and then Tasha had to fill in. Because that was also like COVID, too. And was Tasha from Peter's season? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, they had to pull in Tasha because Claire picked somebody after the second week or something. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. I'm excited, you know, happy for Jen. I just wish we would know. We knew more. We don't yeah. know anything about her. And I hope, uh, you know, I hope they aren't as precious. With, they're usually so precious with giving us access access to their leads but like they did such a poor job of telling Jen's story on this season I hope they decide yeah. to let us know who this person is because I feel like we got to know her a little bit at the women tell all a little she had the hot well seat. maybe that'll make it kind of more interesting I don't know sure I mean, yeah for us diehards like we're gonna watch it either way you know well, yeah. Yeah. but I'm just saying for the people who like you know well like, but I mean like maybe not having all the info so you're not going in with already like it, an opinion that is already colored that you're like, I don't know anything. So we can all learn about this together. We'll right. see. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't Listen, know. they surprised with Hannah Brown. That worked out. That worked. You yeah. Know? They surprised you with me and say what you want, but you guys watched the fuck out of that season. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so who knows? Who knows? And she does shots. So. Shot o'clock. Is that a that's, bachelor thing or is that a her? That's a her thing. I, first time I've ever heard that in my entire life. I guarantee so. that's going to be a thing of the season. <laughs> I, I, no, it'll probably be a thing because like we don't know anything about Jen. So like all over the internet for the next three days, shut a clock. And you remember uh, when they, you know, this, this another thing reminds me of when Becca Kufrin was the Bachelorette. What was her big oh, thing? Oh. Well, uh, you remember? Yes. And again, like for three days, everyone was saying it and everyone oh was like, now don't ever fucking say it again. Um, it? Oh my God. The, like, what was her tagline? Oh. Let's do the damn thing. Let's, yeah, let's do, do the, the damn, damn thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, she said it like 30 <laughs> times at the finale. And then she was the bachelorette. And like three days later, I was like, don't ever fucking say that again. Um, it's, it's giving that the guys are going to be pretty messy this this coming season then. If, if her tagline is shot o'clock. 
I'm like, she wants that apparently. They she wants someone with a big personality. Well, you know what? Big, big shot of clock. Maybe, maybe, enormous. That, maybe it's time personality. it gets a little like messy because like, uh, how old is she? Do we know? I, I don't know. <laughs> I remind my, and no disrespect to Jen, but I, he was like, so who do you know who the Bachelorette is? And my friend, my friend uh, was like, Jen. Like and who? I was like, who again? Like, which <laughs> week did they go home? You know, there's so many, there's so many contestants. It's such a blur. They didn't tell her story. Not She's like- She's 26. Not like they told, mm-hmm. you know, Daisy's and Kelsey's and Rachel's and 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 uh, Maria's. She got kicked off. Lexi, you know, we know more about know. Lexi. Facts. Hey. And I really liked Lexi, but she got kicked off uh, the week before Hometowns, correct? Lexi? Uh, Jen. Oh, Jen, yeah. I think so. So, yeah. like, we didn't get to see, like, her family and, like, home stuff and everything. No, no. no. Oh, that's a bummer. What did you think of Maria getting up at the end and... Giving I mean, her stamp of approval for I Jen. think it was very smart for them to do that because, like, it's no, obviously, like, a lot of people wanted Maria. The internet was very, I mean, a lot of people wanted Maria. It seemed it, the, the hashtag The Bachelor was very pulling for Maria. So much so that, like, when they did the whole Daisy fake out, there were even, you know, Daisy's very popular. Like, I thought, I thought Davey was, Daisy was a slam dunk. They were upset about that. So I think they were, I, I, so I think it was smart. Maria very graciously said a lot of nice things about Jen. So like, I think that was a very smart way to support their bachelorette and, and, and um, pass the torch, you know, so to speak. I don't know if it'll work with Bachelor Nation, but, uh, and then a lot of people immediately were like, oh, oh, maybe Bachelor in Paradise, but like, who knows? If they don't do Bachelor in Paradise, they're, they're, they're really missing out because the women yeah. from this season have been phenomenal. Maybe that's what they're, they're waiting for. Yeah, like maybe. They Are they not doing it? I think they were. It was such not. a fucking mess last year yeah they had the i think one of some of the worst ratings ever after following the golden bachelor which was like through the roof ratings and Mm -hmm. they it it was not good it was not good also hot take but i feel like the men on bachelor in paradise have kind of ruined it in the sense that i'm like they're not really going after the women they're like cool bro hang out it's very bro-y yeah it's very like Mm. yeah and the women are like hey are we on a couple or not? And he's like, well, let me just go hang out with my bro. So I'm like, if they actually had men that were like of caliber, like actually looking for relationships, it would be great like the old times. But like, I think that's where it fell off a little bit. Well, the problem is, I don't think men want to kiss each other for the most part. <laughs> yeah. And so also that's like, probably the problem. How many people are <laughs> let's try to look for a relationship? <laughs> But but, no. but why, what if they make it so it's like they're not there to look for a relationship, but they're just like there to like look for I don't know, someone to like I, hang out with for a little I, while. I think the, <laughs> I, Take I the think pressure off is, of it. I think yeah. what it is, I think Summer. you're right. No, everyone's going there not just for a relationship. And I think it would be insane to only go for a relationship. That would literally be insane. But I think when the women show up, they're more like, all right, let's lock the, f- let's lock, lock the fuck in. The end We're goal here. is engagement. Like when I showed up, you know, I was... Like I was there for like I was literally I mean literally there I was like I've never been to Europe so this will be cool <laughs> like that was that was my justification. Didn't you film in Mexico? Uh, no, we went to Europe the first. I mean, either way, okay. I mean, I knew we were going to travel. Like, <laughs> but the fact- I had, and I had I had never left. I went. I had never been to Europe or Asia. So either way, I was going to be winning. <laughs> but the way that people get like engaged in Bachelor in Paradise, and I know it's so it's worked out for some of them, but it's like that's kind of insane to me. But like, I think can they can they make it like a, a bit of a different sort of like premise and like Solid. something well, we're like talking about doing the bachelor games again they, i think they should fun. bring back uh bachelor, bachelor pad, pad or some sort of bachelor of games like reality competition has never been more popular yeah so and, it's like uh, not about just like trying to like lock it down bravo did so much better of creating some sort of like universe uh i think abc the bachelor they're they're, they're more known for alienating their uh <laughs> alumni and being like thank you next um for whatever reason, and they just decided not to. But I, to I th- lean yeah, in. while it's while it's more than obvious that no one's there trying to. Once you're off the boat, everyone's like, they get kind of like put into a sphere of like, I don't know, Thank like you. its own world. No, no, like well, it's like they go they go on the bachelor. It didn't it? They didn't get chosen. They went like that. They're trying to like be like, you know, like influencers something. or whatever yeah. something. So like, just don't try to capitalize on on that sort of what the, what the bachelor already is. Where it's like looking for love, trying to like get engaged the whole thing. Like if they just made something else entirely, I don't know. Yeah. Why can't you just admit everyone like we're all frisky and all, half our hearts are broken? Like, why does it have to be this serious thing? Like, isn't yeah. Bachelor in Paradise supposed to be the like Bachelor light? Like, it's just. Well, yes. But like Bachelor, I mean, again, depends on who's making the decisions there. Like it's a company like any other people come and go. So like people's opinions on what the show should be change. And it's been a comedy at times. It's been more earnest, like the people who run the franchise. I mean, they they take making great television very seriously more than anything. But like some are more into like the love 
and they take are very earnest about it and like so much so that you know, part of the problem is that the show has shamed people for showing up for the wrong reasons so people are feigning sincerity because they're so afraid of the show being like you're not there well that's what i mean if they, the don't, right if they don't need to be there for a reason period then just to show up look hot maybe make out with somebody have a good time like the I don't know. Yeah, you, you come from <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Sounds great. Uh, what I've learned watching Bravo <laughs> and The Bachelor, two very different fucking... I was like, <laughs> going to say you're yeah. just describing Love Island now. Yeah. Well, they... they I mean, and it worked. Katie, they, they Katie, a week ago, okay, a week ago, Jesse Palmer on the <laughs> tell-all was like, the craziest thing this season was like, did Maria tell so-and-so to shut the fuck up? That was the big like, oh no. And like, meanwhile, Jax is like, I fucked a porn star, you know? Like, you know, so just <laughs> two very different levels of entertainment. I, you know? I know, but uh... if you were a producer on the show, Katie, what what, what would you want to, to watch The Bachelor more? Just I don't to, think they could use notes, to be honest. Yeah, like it's like this, like wholesome show where it's like you know, it's yeah, like no, be... the fuck, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. What do you want it to be? I want to see mess. I'm gonna get nasty. Yeah, I want to see like I want to see some. I want to see people <laughs> bitch each other out. I want to see people get wasted. Yeah. I want to see. Yeah, well, let's, I want to see. Let's, fights. Let's get, I want to see some yeah. slob kebabs immediately. When, when, everyone's, yeah. everyone's too buttoned up. Slob too kebabs. buttoned up. It's like, oh my god! Like it's a, it's, it's it's ABC The Bachelor. Like it's I network television still. I... Hey, you had Corinne. You had uh, who's well, the girl you know, that passed you had, out? You during... had to have the guts to take the wrath. Like the the problem with being, especially The Bachelor. I know Caitlyn like, Bristow was like the the you, the you, like. She was the the wild card of it all, and she was even like that wild. I'm like, no, what the exactly. hell? You get judged. You get judged, especially as a bachelor or as the bachelorette, for like who you keep and send home. Even though like half the time you don't give a shit, and like me knowing that Corinne, Corinne was a star, a absolutely. an absolute star. Like whether we had, you know, but like mm -hmm. I knew I was gonna get shit, and I fucking got shit, you know. But like, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, she's a star. Well, yeah, no, I, I mean, I get it. I get it's ABC. I get it's Middle yeah. America. Oh, I they want to keep it wholesome. That's why we have Step you, away Katie, from Hallmark. so we can like you know cruise on over to fucking cable. <laughs> the best thing that's happened to Nick is is branching into Bravo. He's like, wait, it's like, oh my god, the discourse here, like so much fun, so much to talk about. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Katie's like, that's my life. <laughs> Dana, I'm like, uh, can I? Uh, uh, here's a question. What you filmed the reunion? We hear it's mm. messy. We hear Andy Cohen saying it's strong finish. I think a lot of people went into season eleven thinking maybe it's the last i'm assuming you don't know but if you were in vegas pr placing bets uh are you expecting a season 12 or no i mean i would assume i mean the the ratings have been really good mm. so i mean unless the ratings are bad like it don't okay. i can't imagine that they wouldn't i don't know we don't find that out we find out when everyone else does sure. it's usually not now and do you expect any major mix-ups like any core members possibly not returning i don't i mean i don't know anything's possible or any, i think anything's possible dana any I'd chances your input on this any maybe chances it's safer of returning? for you to answer i think anything's possible <sighs> we well, literally just said that i mean because <laughs> I, I just think I could see it going one of two ways, and is it? A, is it? I hope a, the shake. Is, I hope is it, a shake is it a, up happens. Is it them or them? Like, is it like a? It's either you or me. T to the death. <laughs> like, is like could have just just throwing no, out names. That, I don't think that would ever work. I don't think you can make those kind of demands. <laughs> I think. I think. Like. I think. I've, I've heard like housewives maybe do that in the past. Not and even I don't demands. Think I don't. I, I don't know. I think that certain people are sick to death of certain things about the show and um it will probably be up to them ultimately you so. think ariana is going to graduate from being on vanderpump rules i don't know i i, I, I no think idea. that makes a lot of sense yeah i think um some people i would watch a spinoff kind of... of you and ariana you, where do we get the drama though you know you have like you know, it's like you grow up and then like everyone else still is doing whatever they're fucking doing in <laughs> the fucking, uh, <sighs> yeah, maybe they would just be, I don't know. <laughs> Dana, would you ever return to reality TV? If it was a certain set of circumstances. So like Vanderpump Rules is just obviously not a fit for me. Um, it definitely not no, but it's not something that I'm like, I really fucking want to be on reality TV. If it was something that I was excited about with people that I was excited being around. Yeah. Sure, why not? We're on a rock floating through space. I think we're all gonna uh, die soon. <laughs> sure. I think you're excellent television. I think you're too good for your own good, and you like you're too afraid to <laughs> go on and say what you would really want to say. I don't. I and don't I say that as a compliment. Well, 
Thank you. But um, no, it's it's not that I'm afraid of saying what I want to say because that's how I operate in my real life. Um, well, no, I, the reason I'm not back on reality TV like yeah, that. Yeah, it's but, <laughs> but like, it's ugh. but there are there are certain elements about it that I do feel like are not to be a bitch, but like more elementary than I am that I like just don't there's certain things I don't want to participate in and it's like you that's playing the game you still have to and, pants people as a 40 year old man yeah so <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, won't, I, hear you. I won't be pantsing anyone but if it were the right circumstances with the right girls well we are loving the valley and Vanderpump it's I'm great. excited to see how it all goes down any other bachelor thoughts I mean again congratulations to Jen uh bachelor I'd love to know who your next lead is anytime before the season starts. Thank you, ladies, for being a part of this episode. This was hey, so much fun. Thanks, thanks for playing us. with us. Lots of fun. Yeah, we had a great time. Yeah, we talked about guys. a lot. We spent the it's whole goddamn day together. Yeah. yeah. It was um, like a, overall, a great episode, I it was thought. Like, great episode. Excited. And if you a want more, uh, tomorrow, Disrespectfully is out, another yes. episode. Uh, I think you elaborate on some of the tea we talked about today. And then some. And then some. And then on Thursday, a reminder, going deeper, we got Joey and Kelsey with us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll get to know them a little bit more. I will say, it's a hell of a time between fucking when they wrap filming and, and this moment. Those couples are not set up for success. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I can't wait to ask them all about it. They're not. They're not. Like, imagine, okay, you get engaged on a show. You, you've spent... I don't know, let's say, let's say 10 hours together. That's, I think that's being generous. I, I think you have a weekend. That's pretty cool. Like you off camera, you get a, like a, a weekend. You 10 hours combined? Probably. Yeah, the whole, yeah. Oh the whole time. Then you, <laughs> then, you, then, you get, then you get put up in a really cool place. That, that weekend's pretty cool. You get to connect. You call your friends. Everything's exciting. And then you go back to your world and that's kind of freaky. And you're kind of freaking out. What the fuck just happened? You're not allowed to like, you, you get your phones back. You're back online. Who knows what's been saying who or what? You talk to your friends. You can't see your person. And every two to three weeks, you get to fly out. They lock you in like, a, you know, a house. It's nice. But again, you can't fucking go anywhere. And that's fucking hectic. Meanwhile, then it starts airing. You get to watch, you know, if you're Kelsey, you get to watch Joey, like, say all this crazy shit, make out with all these women. He's just like, babe, it was always you. Meanwhile, every episode is just like, I have a good, definitely pick date. It's just very fucking hard. And I then all those, and that's, and that's, and that's before you get into like all the bullshit we say on this show and all the fucking bloggers and their opinions. And like, it's the first time on your show. And it's just like, people are, it's, it's a lot. So I wish them all the best and I hope they're doing well and I can't wait to talk to them and see how crazy it's fucking been. Anyways, goodbye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.